things to kind of. All right. I think we're live. Welcome to PDA. Back after a week off. I apologize. I was in Colorado picking up our new mascot. This is Sir Snuggles. He's our new PDA mascot. Say hi, everybody, to Mr. St I'm sorry, Sir Snuggles, also known as uh, Snugs a lot, um, L Snuggles, um, DJ Snuggles when he's on his on the ones and twos. That's funny. <laughs> uh, you know, when he's seeing patients, he's Pup McSnuggles. Anyways, all right, that's Mr. Snuggles, everybody, Sir Snuggles. And uh, I had to fly out to Colorado last weekend to pick him up, which is why we missed last week. So we do apologize, but I'll welcome find back. A perfect place to put this shit. <laughs> well, welcome back. Well, Dot finds the perfect place to put this shit. <laughs> you know me, I don't have one of them selfie sticks or. I got you. Things. Do you have I'm what I sideways? When I'm in the car. Do you have a little ledge under where your speedometer is? That's where I always like to put it. Yeah. There you go, right there. And then, then sometimes you got to prop it up. Wait. Oh, no, you're good. We can see you. Sometimes I got to yeah. stuff a napkin in it to, like, angle it right, you know? I, I see them. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you might be good. What's nice about that is – you're looking somewhere that you're kind of used to looking <laughs> while you're driving. <laughs> Makes it a little less dangerous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'm not driving. I'm just, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing laundry. Oh, okay. Oh, Fair enough. All right. So technical so, difficulties aside, um, we are uh, fashionably late as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for anybody who's still hanging in there. Uh, we got a few topics. Uh, for you guys today, I have one. Um, Victor has one that we weren't sure we were going to start off with, but maybe he's reconsidered. You want to? You want to? I got one. Oh, oh, oh! I don't know if that, I don't know if we've ever let Doc go first with the new three-topic uh, format. You so know, you know what I want to talk about. I, oh, you know what? I think maybe you got. I, I'm, go. What do you want to talk about? You see it. Is I it? See. Seems like a boxing glove. The fight tonight. Oh, oh. let's do it. <laughs> you know, I'm just fucking around. I got nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, Victor, you got. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. I, I, I'm adamantly upset about the topic I want to talk about, but I have a sneaky suspicion more people will be interested in what what you uh, were talking about. So, but it's up to you. I can start off if you want to. I leave it to you, Victor. Yeah, no, I can, I can do it. All right, not a problem. Uh, so this week, the NFL came out with a uh, surprising, I guess, uh, news story that they were going to stop using race norming in their concussion settlement. I guess is what it's called. So they've been race making norming. settlements. Yeah, race norming. So they've been doing settlements with all the players. They have to come in and see, you know, if they've had um, any kind of concussions or anything. Well, they've been using race norming to grade how much, how affected the players are by this concussion. What race norming is apparently. So what they're saying is that they were paying out black players less than white players because they started off with less cognitive ability than white players. <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> it's like the, it's the same deal from like years and years and years ago. But uh, yeah. they're basically saying that, well, black players didn't start out with intelligence, so they didn't <laughs> lose much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy. And I, I, I hadn't heard about this until Victor brought it up, but you're saying that, like, the NFL – Hey, te te text that to me, man. Text, text me what that, what that title is. That's well, what, awesome. I'm, I'm more surprised I'm about is that you're saying that they, like, voluntarily made a statement about this? Of course. There was a case that was brought to court or to their – I don't know if it's to court or to uh, their, their board – 
or whatever. So basically, there was <laughs> one player. <laughs> That dude is cute as fuck. I'm sorry. Not you. <laughs> not you, Bobo. Not talking about you. <laughs> nah, hey, look. I mean, interrupt you. I, I just think he's cool. just nothing but cute. I just think as people are listening to the idea that the NFL thought that black people are dumber than white people, you might want to look at this puppy face for a second. <laughs> Make life a little bit better. All right, back to it. <laughs> That's perfect, bro. Perfect. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, so that makes a little bit more sense. You're it like, because I'm saying, I, I guess. Uh, Why would they come out with this? Amongst all uh, the obvious things that you could be upset or taken back by, right? Like, um, why on God's green earth would they, would they would they willingly announce that they've been they, they've been paying out based on the fact that they decided black people were dumber than white people? Like, that's not typically something you want to voluntarily admit, you know what I mean? Well, there was a but black it's, it's the American way. It's, it's okay. At, at this point, at this point in time on earth, it's not surprising and that's, I think that's the overall sad part. It's, it's, I, it's, it's, it's absolutely. all good. It's not surprising. I don't, it's not surprising that they were doing it, but I, it's funny as hell, but I think <laughs> we have at least gotten to a point where, why, you know, like it's it's not surprising that people are doing it, but society as a whole is not going to hear it and be like, "Oh, of course you were." No, well, we don't have any. I mean, like people are going to be pissed about this, obviously, and you you would imagine that they didn't willingly want the whole world to find out that they've been being bigoted, racist, as you know, to their players that are suffering brain injuries of all things <laughs> to decide to be racist about let's fuck with the people who can't you know use their brains anymore because of the game they were playing for us i mean that's it's fucking all the, mighty, the almighty dollar man they're just trying to save some bucks and since 95 percent of the nfl is black they sell it they save that much money sure which is why but, I don't, but here's the thing about saving money the nfl is a 501 C3 is nonprofit. What are you saving? There well, are rules to being a nonprofit organization. Right. The NFL might be a nonprofit organization, right? But the but the entities that profit off of the NFL, which are many, including the owners of the actual franchises themselves are going to make tons of fucking money with the NFL is paying out less money. Not not I mean, but not you You have to look look into nonprofit qualifications. You have to give out fifty one percent. That's why you have all those. Uh, oh, uh, the NFL donated their time, or this team donated their time. They they, they got all types of money to where. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. They're, they're, they're of course they do. But the but the NFL. But they- is a nonprofit organization. The the Eagles aren't a nonprofit organization. Like the Cowboys aren't a nonprofit organization. And you know how much money they're bringing be, be in. Be careful. Be very careful when you talk about my Cowboys. <laughs> well, tread, tread lightly. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but I'm pretty sure your Cowboys no, are playing. Shit. Their, don't break we're, shit. <laughs> we're in their minds playing their stupid black players less money for I, concussions I, I, than their brilliant I, I know, white I know players. Your cheese head. I know your cheeseheads. I know your I'm sure that you know. I'm sure my cheeseheads were taking advantage of the fucking discount as much as anybody. Because there's, um, so, yeah. many, uh, uh, yeah, there's the so many famous bar, black bro. cowboy quarterbacks. Yeah, um, I just, I mean, that's fucking insane. I mean, like, I just. Oh, yeah, so so this is what the deal. all the concussions brought. going on, how is it that for this long, nobody realized they were doing that? Like, I don't understand. Like, at some well, point. This is under their new, their, uh, this was only, like, signed a few years ago. So they, <laughs> so this isn't even something that like they've been doing for the last forty years. Oh, like a no, couple of years ago, yeah, they decided no. black people were dumber than white people. Oh, I don't think, I think that was a carryover. Christ! From <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come with, on. It has to do with their like uh, agreement on paying out people with brain. Injuries. Remember, they didn't want to cover it at all. Remember, right. They were. They didn't want to do brain injuries. Oh no, there's no way these players get brain injuries in the NFL. That's something that happens uh, naturally to everyone. But yeah, so they didn't originally. They didn't want to pay out, and then they did. 
have this agreement, but as part of the cognitive uh, testing that the players go through and decide whether they're going to get any money or not, they have this race norming, which basically the reason it came up was that there was this black uh, player who took the test and they said, no, you don't, you don't pay out. There's no payout for you. But it, they found out and they went through how that they were actually testing him and what they were testing him against, that if he was a white player, he would have gotten paid out. Okay, so, and I want to be clear. I mean, not not that I think either one of these, you know, I mean, they're football players, right? I mean, they're not supposed to be fucking brilliant anyways. Hey, all um, football real, players real quick, went to college. I, got, I, I, don't mean, I don't mean to interrupt y'all, but we, we all know I'm a Cowboys fan. But uh, I have something special that was made for me. Okay. Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> nice. That's cool. That is cool. See that? Got yeah. the last name and the number. Nice. nice. Um, it's, so, it's the Dolphins, because it's the home team. Yeah. Just wanted to share that since we talk about NFL. That's nice. So let me just, I'm just curious. I want to make sure I completely understand the story. So this isn't like based on the testing that they were doing. It's somehow, you know, the group of people that were coming up less smart, tend, you know, it like, like it was literally just like, if you're black, you get this score. If you get white, you were this score and not like they're testing people's, I don't know, IQ levels. And it turns out that for some reason, when you look at the numbers, black people are getting less than white people, right? That's not, that's not what we're talking about. No, it's no. like a, it's like a number. So race norming and I, uh, race norming goes back to a, it was actually a federally funded program that uh, basically, I don't know when it, I, I the say, government. Yeah, I don't want to say it was in the 60s. It was actually supposed to be a positive thing that they were, there's a test to get any kind of federal job. And they were noticing that uh, blacks, minorities were scoring lower on the test than white uh, applicants. So they decided to basically lower the uh, score requirement score levels for minorities. Minorities, gotcha. So that, so that more of them would get jobs. And so, so then the idea was that the NFL said since the government <laughs> believes that black people aren't as smart as white people, we're going to use that to pay them less money? Correct. Well, it's the okay. scoring. It's the same thing, like a scoring. That, uh, well, nice. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I I think you're saying it, but I just want to make sure we're not saying that black people were just scoring lower. We're saying that like as they were towering up the scores, like if you're white, you get a hundred points, and if you're black, you get twenty points or something to that extent. So basically, it's like this. Let's say uh, they they a, just didn't give a fuck. Pretty much, yeah, that's true. But well. Like, Black is uh, uh when, it white, when, it, uh when it comes to the money, they have a when it when it comes to the money, they have a way to lower the rate for a reason, and that reason is gonna be bullshit, and that's just what it is. I agree. Right, but I think that they're saying this like if a white they, person with normal like this, intelligence. Right? There's not look, a white person with like normal right? intelligence would score hundred points on this test. A black man with normal intelligence would score an eighty on this test. Now, both black right. and white players take the test now, and they score a 75. That means the black player is only five points lower than what he would have scored if he was a, of normal intelligence, while the white guy is 25 points lower than what he would have scored if he was normal intelligence. So that guy has been affected more by concussions and injuries and cognitive uh, that, issues. That, okay. So then they're going to pay him out more than the black more. guy. Right. right. And so, so it doesn't so have anything to do testing, with though. the actual it's, it's score the that the they testing. took. Here's the thing about the testing. I, I was a test creator. And I can't say what company, but what we did was we created the uh, the bar exam. We created the uh, testing for uh, grades kindergarten through 12. We created the SATs. We are test creators now, mind you. Okay, when the pandemic hit, stuff, certain things happened. We got wind of it first because of the way the way the educational system is set up. 
when they create these tests, I'm, and I'm only using the same uh, criteria for NFL that I'm going to use that we educate our children, right? You can design a test to where I will take it, given my ethnic background, and I will sco- score lo- lower than someone like Adam. Now, when you put that in place to the NFL, you're going to see that curve because how was this test created and who was it catered to? Sure, sure. Okay, but that's what I'm saying is like before we go down all these different rabbit holes, like like the, I don't know that that's actually what's happening, and that's what I'm trying to understand. Like it, it is it a matter of they set up a test where when you look at the numbers – black people were just not doing as well on the test as white people were for whatever reason. And that there's lots of different reasons that could be, or is it simply that regard, like both people get a 75 on the test with that same exact number, a white person's going to do better than a black person is going to do. Cause those are two different things. Right. And, and right. I think it's important to understand which of the two things we're talking about. Right. And it sounds like what Victor is saying is that two people that got a 75 would end up with different ultimate scores, whether they're black or white. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Right. Okay. So it's but, not about but the, but the, the grading scale is going to be. But what he was what he was pointing out was that if both people got a seventy five, and if and correct me if I'm wrong, Victor, the white person with the seventy five would get paid out more. Than that's the what I just said. Right. Yes. That's what yes. I just said. That, that that's a, that's what I'm saying is it's not that they created a score, a test that when you look at it for reasons that you'd have to dig into not, and figure yeah, it's out. It's not a racially biased test. Right. It's not it's not that it's not that black people are just not doing as well on the test and thus not ending up with as much money. It's that no matter what, you know, to when you compare them side by side, even if they end up with the same score on the test, the white person is getting the a bigger benefit of the doubt than the black person is simply for right. being white, regardless of how they did on the actual cognitive test. Right. That's fucking insane. I mean, I, yeah. obviously you guys are right in the sense that even if it was that they were testing out lower and you just noticed that white people were testing higher than black people were, there are lots of reasons why that might not have anything to do with the ability of the white or the black person, but rather how the test was created. That's also a thing that happens. Uh, but that's not, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is I think this is a lot more, you know, clear cut. That's what I was trying to figure out is if, if it was the other scenario, then we'd have to look into wh- wh- why those test scores were being different because while there's a really good chance there's a shitty reason for it, there could not be, right? And probably not, but you never know. You'd actually have to look into why they were scoring differently. But this is not that complicated. This is just simply you're getting even more credit for being white than you are for being black. And, and then yep. that, there is no you know, why are the tests coming up negative? Like we know why, because you're either black or white. That's the only difference. And that's really fucked up. Um, you know, you know, it, it's, it's something because I, I got to go switch my clothes from the wash to the dryer. But it, here's, here's like a, a calm uh, point out. It's so sad that, I mean, and I can speak as a black man, that there are so many different atrocities on minute levels that we could we could talk to today as you know as brothers we all you know we know we know what the fuck is up it's just so sad that there are so many disadvantages in the way the system is set up to where people that are my age and older were not surprised the younger generation is totally flabbergasted about it because they can't believe that this is America Yeah, because they don't know the history of America. I I, I agree with you. I think there is also some, I don't disagree with you, right? You're absolutely right. Um, No, you need to disagree. This is disagreeable. (laughs) No, I mean, you make a fair point. I, I do think that there are, uh, there was a word I used for it before, and I can't think. But I mean, there, there's. Uh, well, I think that. Huh? Here, here's something. It does not. You do not have to be surprised by something 
to still be outraged by something. Well, that's definitely true. I, I absolutely agree with that as well. But what I was going to say is that there is some nuance to all these things as well that I think gets lost, right? Because I understand what you're saying of not being surprised and, and you're not wrong, right? There's so many things that have been out there that people just haven't been aware of for a long time. And so for that reason, they're shocked that these kind of things can happen at all. But I, I think there is... I think you can take that too far and not acknowledge the fact that while we know these things go on to suggest that even knowing all of that, that two years ago, an organization as large as the NFL who relies so you know, like, I mean, you know, the support of society um, is, you know, I mean, if people stopped, liking football or the NFL, they would crumble, right? I mean, they rely on us buying tickets and watching games and buying merchandise and all that shit. The fact that really two nice years jerseys ago... jerseys with your names on the back. Right, exactly. The fact that two <laughs> years ago, with things coming as far as they have come, then an organization that big would make something that just, like, obviously racist to say. You know what I mean? It's not even something that you could be like, well, wait a minute. You know, there's another side to that. I mean, there's no other side to that argument. It's obviously racist bullshit. Nobody can support the decision behind that. And I think that even knowing everything that we know to suggest that that isn't ballsy or, you know, like I, beyond the pale. I got to step away to change my clothes. I'll be right back. I'll All be right. just running. All right. You know what I'm saying, though? Like, I don't. I'm not disagreeing with that. Like I, I recognize that people are starting to wake up to the idea that racism hadn't almost been abolished and that, you know, it does happen on a regular basis and in bigger ways than you can, you can imagine. And I get all that, but like, even still, like, this is like to say, this is the same thing. Like the shit that we're dealing with, like in police departments and the justice system. I mean, these are things that have been baked into those systems for decades longer than that right and that we're trying to like suss out and figure out and deal with and not that that makes it right but at least like this is something they came up with like two years ago i mean the idea that society would have been okay two years ago is it we it, we know they you know what i mean like everybody two years ago everybody knew that this was unacceptable and they did it anyways i mean that that's that's beyond right. the pale. That's you're, like, that's not the normal shit we're dealing with. You know what I mean? You're absolutely right. But you're also, again, I'm with Scott where he says you can't be surprised because the NFL and the NBA are structured to take advantage of black and minority as athletes. Like, that's why there's not that many black coaches. That's why there's not that many black quarterbacks. That's why there's almost no black ownership. I think there is like one or two. I don't know. I mean, I don't know that I completely agree. I maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. And and I'm look. We know that there's owners of franchises that are racist. Like we've seen that. That there's no doubt about that. But like as a whole, is is as much of that. I mean, like you, you. I mean, you're telling me that most organizations, if they could bring in a black quarterback that was better than a white quarterback and was going to win them more fucking games and make them more likely to go to the fucking Super Bowl. They're not going to do that. I mean, I just, I'm sure they even then there's, it's the, it's racist uh, baked into the whole process because when there is a black quarterback, he's an athletic quarterback. When there's a white quarterback, he's an intelligent quarterback, you know, a real student of the game, that kind of bullshit where it's a black quarterback as well. He's, man, can you, he avoids this and does that and he, his athleticism, natural ability and all that crap they, they pour on him. They never say that is an intelligent quarterback. I still, I mean, I think, I'm mean, not that there's not anything to that, but I mean, like, like even if there is, like, that, that's the kind of stuff that I feel like, like, stop getting your panties in a butt. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not saying that there isn't something to the thought process of why, an announcer says natural ability as opposed to like a big thinker or a brilliant statistician or whatever. But like, like seriously, when that's the biggest fucking problems we have, like who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Like, so some announcers kind of like doesn't realize he's saying some shit that he shouldn't be saying. Like, I mean, we're talking, we're talking about the NFL paying 
black people with concussions less money because they're determining that they're dumber than white people. I mean, you see, like, I don't give a big enough shit about the worrying that announcers use that let's be honest, some of them might be racist and some of them might be choosing words and not having any fucking idea that the words that they're saying might make some people feel less valuable than others or that or that they might not think that there's any value difference between natural talent and a, and a studier of the game. They're just two different types of, I, I don't know. To me, that's like, you're really wading into some hard yeah, shit to determine whether it's racist or not. And I, and that's to, what systemic racism is. That's what people people want you to think. That's what people are claiming. I I just, yes, there's systemic racism. All right. Of course there is. Right. But it's also become real easy to just point at something and say, well, that's happening because of racism. Well, maybe possibly. And obviously sometimes it is right. But Sometimes a guy just might think somebody has natural talent. That's an actual thing, right? That you can have whether you're black or white. And to say that because he chooses this word when it's a black guy and this that's that's because in he, the NFL everyone has natural talent. Still, like still, like you're telling me like Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, perfect examples. I would say I would say Michael Jordan was more of a natural talent guy and I would say Magic Johnson was more a studier of the game. Both of them had tons of natural talent. Both of them studied the game. Obviously, neither one of them could have gotten to the point that they did without both of those things being true. But if you look at them and you're comparing the two of them, Like, I think Magic Johnson had his success less on talent as and more on understanding how the game worked and where people were going to be and how to make shit happen. Like, he just used his brain more than his talent. And again, I mean, we're talking about Magic Johnson. Of course, he has talent, but he was more a study of the game, whereas Michael Jordan could just jump and shit would happen. Like, he didn't even have to think about it. That's more natural talent. So that's what I'm saying is, yeah, everybody has natural talent and everybody studies the game. There's some people that are more one than the other and and whether they're black or white. And again, look, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying some of that shit is absolutely um, systemic racism. Of course, that's true. And some of it isn't systemic. Some of it is just those people are racist and they're trying to not get fired without saying the shit that they don't want to say. And so they word it in a way that isn't as bad as what they actually want to say. And they're just racist assholes. Of course, that is true too, right? I'm not suggesting that any of the things that people are complaining are happening, aren't happening. I, I absolutely believe and know that they are. I've seen it myself, right? But I just think I was thinking about this the other day, like, and I'm not question every time somebody says something, right? But, you know, when somebody thinks they're experiencing somebody being racist to them, right? And then, and then talks about that, like, they're the only person who's making that judgment. They, they literally don't have any idea what the person who did this was thinking or saying, or the company that he worked for, how they felt like th- this is one little experience that they had that they felt like they were being discriminated for being black or Jewish or gay or whatever. Right. And, and look, we know often that is absolutely true, but we also have to assume that sometimes it's not right. Sometimes it's a misunderstanding. I mean, we've all had conversations where somebody gets utterly frustrated like pissed off or and you're like what the fuck is happening right now you know what i mean like i have no idea why this person is upset i was like complimenting him or i was just having a regular conversation and it's because they take something that you said to mean something completely different than what you intended it to mean right that happens all the time as well and i think we we have gotten to a place where we're so sensitive which is good. We need to be right. We're so aware of the fact that these things are happening and can happen and do happen that like when we think it happens, that's the end all decision to whether it happened or not. Right. It must've had, I felt like I was being discriminated against. So I must've been right. Well, or you're a little sensitive, right. Or you were (laughs) having a bad day and we're looking for something to be upset about and found it right. Like all those things, we know are true as well. Like we know those things happen too, 
right? And 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 so Why are you people so sensitive? <laughs> what do you mean, no. you people? <laughs> But I mean, look, there are people. I, it just seems like to me, I often hear <laughs> stories of people talking about shit that's happened to them. And I think, yeah, maybe you're absolutely right. Uh, but I could also envision a scenario where that's not at all what that motherfucker meant. And you just took it that way, right? Now, I don't know that I'm right, but you don't know you're right any more than I do either. Like either one of us could be right about what happened unless we bring that guy in and get him to honestly answer, which would be really hard to fucking do. Uh, because even if you found the guy and he was a racist, he'd probably just lie and say that he wasn't, right? So I mean- I he would say, why are you people so sensitive? So goddamn sensitive, right. <laughs> uh, so look, I, I'm not saying that we, we will ever know, right? It's always gonna be left up to interpretation. But I do think that our, our is this racism knob has been turned up so fucking high that it might often be easy to interpret things that might not have been or intended to be or were right and we just took them that way <laughs> you know what i mean like you, i know you, adam you have such a beautiful soul <laughs> <laughs> i think it's it's dangerous to to to, to jump so to these conclusions i think that Especially in a world... I understand one thing. I understand something, man. We've always known shit has been racist. You have to be logical and question why has the knob been turned up? Great. I, well, I mean, I started that statement by saying that it's a good thing that we are paying closer attention and that needs to happen. But one of the downsides or countersides of us turning our attention up so much and being so aware aware of things is that it might not be that hard to be aware of shit that isn't happening as well. That's all I'm saying. Right. It's like it's like it's like think about you you have what you call regular time. They have what you call deep time. They measure, you know, Earth existence in deep time to where we're not even a second on the clock based on the time of Earth existence, right? right. Let's short that down to four to eight year, four year to eight year spans. You know, and this is an example, but you utilize this metaphor and this example to kind of paint a picture for you as to why things are the way they are. There has to be an agenda being created. We're just at that time where we're right. We can't stand back from, we can't stand outside of time and see. Right, okay. But look, when look. you look at like, like the, these examples, politicians. You'll okay. see them campaigning in the urban areas. You'll see them campaigning, you know, when it's election year, election time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, once, once election time goes away, you don't see the motherfuckers for another three and a half. But this is kind of, look, this is kind of the, I'm sorry, real quick. This is kind of the point that I'm trying to make, right? It's like, I'm trying to have a really like layered, complicated conversation about, is it possible that everything we think is racism is racism or not? And we're right. going to now have a conversation as to why it's become that way when I, I'm, I'm, I we have viewers. So I'm, okay. that's, I, 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 got you. I don't I support, agree I with what you're saying because I, I agree with you, but do we waste, and I don't want to say waste, do we spend a lot of time that we have talking about how we got here when we agree how we got here? Or do we spend the time knowing that we're here now trying to figure out how to move forward into a better direction, which is, you see what I'm saying? That, that's, that's the point I was trying to make. I, I understand that. And that's a natural human uh, process when you're looking at dealing with right versus wrong, good versus evil. That's normal. You, you, we want to move forward from that. But until we understand in totality the magnitude of what what created this standardized line, we can't go past. 
But what I agree. We can we can we can we can gain we can gain some momentum. We can gain momentum. But until we understand why the car is out of gas, you know, and, and how to get I don't gas, disagree with you. Footwork. I don't disagree with you, but what, what I'm saying is if we spend a week talking about why the car is right, out right. of gas, at, at what point do we stop talking about doing. why we ran out of gas, which is important because we but don't want to run out of gas again, and then but start but figuring out, action. right, how do we go get some fucking gas and I get moving right. again, right? Yeah, I don't know. Let's get some get this shit going. No, I got right. you. I got you. I, I understand, I, and I agree with you. I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, I, and I don't disagree point. with you either. Understanding how we got here is important, and it's not just understanding, but acknowledging that's what happened and that's why we're here is important. Because when there's big fuck ups, you want to know why, so you don't make those changes again. But it also needs to be acknowledged that there were big fuck ups that shouldn't have happened. People got hurt, and I mean, you know, we could go into lots of, I mean, like really horrible shit happened to lots and lots and lots of people because of really bad decisions that were made by people. And that is absolutely true. And and that does need to be acknowledged, but I don't think society, I mean, have we sessed out every single individual case of suffering and wrongdoing? Of course not. I don't think that's possible. Right. I mean, if, if it is, we should do that, but I don't think it is like uh, we're talking about millions and millions of people that would right. not be possible to do. But I mean, we are, I think as a society doing that, like I, I you know, I mean, we, 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 we talk about it. I think we could do a better job of it. You know, I, you know, I, um, they opened up the, is it the black history? It's not black history museum. What was that new museum that they just opened up in Washington, like a couple of years ago? Um, uh, the, the pity museum. I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's something like the black experience uh, museum or rate yeah. oh that one was terrible yeah or some shit like yeah, that yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that, I don't get look bro i tell everybody all the time i say you you're looking at someone who i and i live out here in texas i always give the clear example because i like to watch the face of people i say you drive down i-10 or i-35 or whatever and you see these walmart's shopping centers i grew up driving up i-95 and then turnpike and random roads in florida seeing slave plantations sure florida to texas yeah absolutely no florida up north to georgia and to the well, carolina even more so <laughs> yeah. right right right, right. That's, that's, that's what i mean so it's like no, you turn around <laughs> exactly yeah, so it's like it's one of those things as to where it's one of those things as to where it's like i understand where you're coming from adam living out here in texas you want to you want to get past that where the original 13 colonies you know the founding all that good shit right i have a i was programmed differently because Be of what i saw yeah to be different, I'm not yeah. saying I, I want to get past that. It's more is like, I, I, you know, I, I want people to start getting along with each other and recognizing that the color of our skin shouldn't keep us from doing that. And and We that, should. We should. But you got... <clears throat> I think you can do we both should. at the same time. I think you can talk, we should. continue to talk about what happened and why. And also, at the same time, work on mending current relationships you know between you no, know, those our- are the end points adam those are the end points and i agree with your end points i agree with them but this is a this is a deep dive a deep dive into how we even got here just some factors you know, you know where I used to work doing what I used to do, and people would be, they would look at me like, wow, you're smart. You're really smart. Like, I wouldn't expect you to be this smart. Like how the NFL was with uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the concussion players. You and I know each other personally, Adam. And, and I can tell you, bro, we, walk, we have walked through 
you and I worked at the same place at one point in time, not the old place, but another place. And I'm not going to say names because you, I, you know, how to, you know what it is, but the place that we worked in the job that I held, people looked at me like, wow. And you're self-taught. It right. used to, it used to disturb me so bad. Sure. That like it was offensive. It is offensive. Yeah. Yeah. To where it was like, and, and, and the only thing I would think in my mind was, you know how y'all still trying to figure out how my people built the pyramids? Yeah, look, I, yeah, I mean. Like, that, it, was, it was just one of those things where it was like, am I not supposed to be this smart? It's in right. my DNA. Right. And the point, You're yeah. still trying to figure out shit that we built thousands of years ago. Well, I, I mean, I would, and I'm say, still taught, but that, that that just me being that's me being emotional, petty, and intellectual at the same time to know how to combat and answer that question. Right. Like you look at I mean, me, like I shouldn't, right. even, I shouldn't even be here. Well, the truth of the matter is, it shouldn't matter what your ancestors. I mean, like your ancestors' ability to build shit, which you know doesn't. Right, right, right. Is it no, going to no, change agree, whether you can be smart or not, which is the point, well, and it's ridiculous always, for people to, to assume at, otherwise. It's, it's super ridiculous, but yeah. you have to also look at 100% of one person and 100% of one another person comprise and creates another entity. Yeah. One plus one equals three, right? Right, but... That right. individual is 100% of each. Right, that's true. But I would say in this country... We are all mixed up enough, right? And come from, yeah. I mean, if yeah. you look at people's genetic history, right? The idea that any of us don't oh. have the ability to either be stupid or retarded, retarded is not a good word, right. really, really smart <laughs> or mentally challenged. I mean, we all have let's, the color of our skin. The <laughs> color of our skin does not determine whether or not we're brilliant or mentally challenged or not. We know oh. that to be true. Oh. Like scientifically, we know that's true. And you're right. Some people are still amazed by or assume horrible shit. The point I was trying to make, I think at the beginning of all of this, is that because what you had said when you were leaving the car is that some people are surprised by this shit and other people have been dealing with it long enough to not be surprised by it. And while right. as a whole, I completely agree with that story, the only point I was trying to make is I think this is beyond that. Like, I don't think this is the standard shit of you working at a job where some moron who happens to work at that place and who's managed to become a manager can still think that way, which is fucking insane. Right. And a multi-billion dollar corporation in the year 2019, 2018 thought it was okay to come up with a policy where they're deciding that 80% of their players are dumber than the other 20% because of the color of their skin. I'm, I understand I what you're saying you, by not being shocked about you. shit like this happening, but I'm just saying real quick, I think this is even beyond above and beyond the shit that we're not surprised by anymore. I, 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 I'm, I'm just trying to make the point that I think this falls higher than that. Like this is more outrageous than the shit that we're just used to but seeing. It, but it's not, it's not. And you want to know the example I'm going to use for you? Okay. A real OG. You ever Mr. Larry? Yeah. You know, he was, you know, he did service. He, he, you could tell he'd been through everything. Right. But he'd come in and he would talk to me like, fuck all this. I'm going to pay my bills. I know what it is. I know who is this and what is that. I'm going to focus on me. And he came in there and had fun with it because right. he was older. He was yeah. beyond our generation. And he enjoyed, I remember. And you talk with him. Yeah, I remember I would he he you know he used he to was, run a really team. he was like the main not CEO but he was like ran a really big store for really and I was like what the fuck are you doing here in this job and he was like right. I get off right. it I get yeah. off at ten o'clock I ain't got to think about that shit till I come back in I know exactly what I have to do nobody bothers me or comes to me with their problems it's the greatest thing like I love it you know yeah. Uh, he was a rich, he was he's a perfect example. Take he Mr. Was good Larry. at it too. Man, that dude could sell his ass off. 
fucking damn good. So take yeah. him, understand Insane. him as a line of people at a certain age that have experienced. Yeah. That's where we are now. You are part of that line that Mr. Latin. Think about it like this, though. Include yourself in the Mr. Larry line, right? Mr. Larry. And realize that when you look across that call floor, these motherfuckers ain't like you. They don't know what you've been through. They don't they right. don't understand what you know. Right. So you have to fall back sometimes and be like, this is where we're at right now. I agree. Look, I... I, I, I that's what I'm trying to say. I, I don't disagree with your premise of shit does come up, right? Like people are surprised that there's institutional racism in the police department or in the justice system. And other people have been well aware of that for a really long time and are not surprised when an outcome other than what we expect the outcome to be when somebody gets pulled over for a traffic ticket or is, you know, in court for something and you know you expect one thing to happen and something else happens and people are shocked and other people are like this is what's been going on for 100 fucking years i totally understand that premise and i agree with it i'm just saying that this isn't this isn't some shit that they cooked up 40 years ago that's still on the books this is shit they wrote like two three years ago well with the nfl yeah yeah (laughs) That's what I'm saying. That part is comedy. Because you want to know why? Here's what, here's what, what old folks will say. Don't play on my intelligence. That shit is comedy because of that factor. People are so disconnected with everything that's going on that they're so woke. Right. <laughs> that you motherfuckers have no idea. I'm, they're so woke right now that they they wake it up past they woke up before the alarm went off and they don't even realize where the fuck we at the the, the depth of this country sure well what I... created what founded it and if you show these motherfuckers they, they'll be like oh my god i can't believe that nah right. bro right Talk to some right real which is folks. where the There's side of... don't worry about google don't worry right. about shit that's that's filtered off of a SEO and, 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 and looking it up online. The problem is that you haven't talked to people who really live through that shit. Agree. So you understand where we're at. Right. So I... that's why these establishments and organizations that have been operating for di- dozens, decades, can do this because they know how it works. But that's my point is that in the last few years, that hasn't been the case. Like people have been getting called out for shit, right? And even shit that they did a long time ago, right? That maybe they're not even doing now, right? Organizations that have been good clean cut organizations for the last 20 years are getting called out for shit they did 40, 50 years ago and getting fucked for it, right? And what I'm saying is this company, knowing all that, said, we're going to right now, not 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 like, hey, guys, you remember this rule we came up with 50 years ago? We should probably change it before somebody finds out about it. And somebody's saying, you know what? Nobody's figured it out so far. I'm sure we'll be fine. That would be fucked up. And that would be the kind of shit that I would say, yeah, of course they fucking did that. That's what they fucking do. This, to me, is beyond that. This is like, even though we appalling. know Utilize the people- the word appalling. And what they did is that they say we are the big bad machine and we'll stick our finger in your applesauce and you ain't going to do shit about it. Make right. sure you tune in next week for game time. Right. And I'm saying call it balls, call it stupidity, call it an unawareness of the direction society's going in. But for a company with all the people working there that work there, right? They got PR teams, they got lawyers, they got all kinds of motherfuckers that they can run shit by and be like, hey, here's what we're planning to do. What do you think about it? And all those motherfuckers thought, 
Yeah, sure. We can call black people stupid. Well, who cares? It's 2019. Well, nobody's <laughs> gonna care about that. I'm saying that takes a certain that takes a a larger fucking bowl of stupidity than the normal shit we're finding out and realizing these days that we weren't aware of before. I think that is like a special, I mean, bowl of obnoxious racism that not only were they okay with being racist, but they apparently like just weren't watching the fucking news when they came up with the fucking idea. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, that's a special brand of stupidity to not think you're going to get called out on that in 2000. I keep saying 2000, I, I don't know, 18, 17. I mean, fuck, pick a teen. It's still a bad idea. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's utterly ridiculous to think that that was just going to like never come out. And if it did, people would be like, yeah, the NFL's racist. Who gives a shit? I mean, come on. That's crazy. <laughs> It's crazy. They were trying to slip one by. It just seems like they were trying to slip one by. And yeah. it's another way for them to keep hold their hold on to more money and right. I mean, I don't what they yeah. deserved. I it's not that I don't understand why they did it. My I'm I'm saying all of that being true, it's still stupid as fuck. Like and, and it's it's not just that's my point is it's not just utterly racist. It's also like you can be racist and not be other kinds of stupid you know what i mean like you could be racist and be like i might think whatever people are pieces of shit right but i am on tv for a living so i'm not gonna get on my tv show and use ethnic slurs against those people because then i won't have my tv show anymore right you can be racist and not be utterly fucking moronic at the same time and this is like a combination of both like we're gonna be racist and stupid at the same fucking time like if their goal was to save money i gotta venture that now everybody knows about it it's gonna end up doing the opposite of that and it's probably gonna cost them way more money than they saved right i mean yeah it just was a dumb idea on so many levels not to mention racist and fucked up you know they're going to have to go back and review all the cases that were uh, denied. Right. And even it if somehow, average. even if somehow they money. only end up paying what they yeah, would have paid, yeah. right? Let, let's say somehow, and I'm sure this is not what's going to happen, right? I'm sure all those people are going to get money for the fact that they got fucked over. You're going to find that people didn't get medical care that now they can't get because it's too late, right? Or yeah, they've yeah. reached a level of something that now is unfixable, right? And now the NFL is going to probably be responsible for all that shit too. But even if somehow they could just go back and be like, we, we gave you $2 million, it should have been $4 million, here's $2 million. Even if that's all they had to do, they still have to spend all the time and money going back and doing all that shit. I mean, it's going to cost them more money no matter or what that's it's just even for the reasons that they thought they were doing it was stupid that's my point it's just stupid like it's a big bowl of stupid <laughs> like there's nothing down, there's nothing you can tell me where i would say okay if i was a heart, heartless asshole or if i was a racist piece of shit this makes total sense to me, right? But I'm saying yeah, even yeah. if I am a heartless racist piece of shit, this doesn't make any fucking sense on any fucking level. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. Yeah, yeah, you have to you have to put you have to put the level of money in place. I am. That's my that was what the level last of money in place. That's my point is even then I think had they gotten away with it, they would have made a lot of money, but they're not going to like they, they, they were never going to some black guy was going to get a check and then find out that his white wide receiver got more fucking money at some point and be like, what the fuck is happening here? I mean, there's no way this was ne nobody was ever going to find out that 80% of players were getting smaller checks. I mean, give me a fucking break. They're, they're, like it was always going to come out and it was always going to cost them more money. It's just stupid. Stupid. On top of racist, it was. But what, what you're seeing, what you're seeing though, bro, is that they knew it would come out. But when you're in power, they don't give a fuck. Let what? it come out. What you gonna do? It's it not is. about. Oh, I might not make as much money next year. It, here's the line: whether I'm gonna not make as much money next year, or am I going to lose everything that I have? 
they are in no way positioned to lose everything that they have. They may take a financial hit this quarter or the next quarter, but it's not something significant enough to where they lose everything they've had. My That's experience give a fuck. My experience with rich people of any ethnic group or religious belief. Or about or, rich, right? not rich. Wealthy. Wealthy. Yeah. Not rich. Right. Wealthy. Right. You're right. Okay. My experience with people from rich to wealthy, right? Most of them are rich or wealthy because regardless of what other kind of person they are, they're smart with money. And smart with money is not, I'm going to make a decision today that is going to end up costing me significantly more money in the future than another decision I could make that would cost me less money. That's not how they got rich. That's not how they got wealthy. They see the future and better than all of us realize what's going to happen. Right. Right. Exactly. And I'm saying they fucking like, dropped a deuce on the forecast of this situation and i am not a rich and wealthy man and if somebody had said to me this is our plan i could have said are you joking like forget how racist and fucked up it is and how big of a scandal it's going to be and the money you're going to lose on people that finally just say fuck the nfl i'm tired of this bullshit which is a whole nother number we haven't even talked about but just the amount you're going to pay out for this thing that we're talking about, it's going to cost you so much money to make this dumbass decision today than it would be to just do the right thing. And you get to do the right thing. Save money and do the right Stand thing. Back. Stand back and look at it, though. When you look at <laughs> forecast, that's yeah. my, that's, that was my point. That was my point. When you stand back and look at the forecasting of it, yes, it's going to cost a they have yeah. contingency plans in place, right? They, there's it's no not racism insurance plan. It's not going to. It's not. But will, will, will this issue be so big that it'll destroy everything? But that that's my point. Rich people, rich people, no, if you have a billion on. dollars, if you have a billion dollars, you don't say, I can make a decision that's going to cost me $200 million or I can make a decision that could cost me $400 million. And you know what? Since losing the $400 million isn't a billion dollars, then fuck it. Let's take a gamble that I'm sure I'm going to lose but, on yeah, and that's, lose that's, 200 extra that's million that's dollars. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. What I'm, what, what, what I'm talking about is like, here's an example. I have, I have a colleague of mine. She made, I think, like, like $350,000, $400,000 a year. Okay. So for her to lose a hundred thousand dollars, that's not a problem. Here's the caveat: she's made that amount for about ten years. But so now that number expands. When you look at like you're putting individual numbers on something that. My, my my point is that this is the NFL. They've been around forever. There's old money. It's already it, the concrete is dry. Now you now you have a tree growing out of it with fruit, and they can say, "Oh yeah, they they they're comfortable in their ways where they can make these decisions." They're I don't a profit organization. I don't this, agree with this, that. Whatever 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 came out is not going to impact. It's not going to. Whatever came out is not going to shut down the world from watching the NFL next week. It, that, that, it doesn't have to be all or nothing for it to be like. Uh, that, that's the thing. It'll never be all or nothing. But it doesn't they'll, have to be. These shenanigans. And, they, and what they'll run is they'll run like, oh, well, like when, when, when Kaepernick took a knee. We clearly know that he took a knee against police brutality. But what the media spun it on was, oh, well, you're against America and you're this and that. And it's and armed we, forces. He, he, yeah. He, yeah, he's not against that. That's not That wasn't why he took it. But when the, the, the media portrayed it, it was like, oh, he took a knee against No, he took a knee against the same shit that Ice Cube and NWA was talking about and Boys in the Hood and, 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 and all that records where you look at police brutality. Yep. But he took it a spun off of that. 
And so now you have people who are dumb as fuck that'll push that that the media agenda. You know, oh, that's disrespectful. You even had what was it last year? Where the where the commentator, the, the, the sportscaster of the Oklahoma game earlier this year was talking about look, you know, he called he called them niggas and all this other shit, nappy headed hoes. And it was like little white girls down yeah. there too. Like yeah. her. What, what, what like high school that, kids, that, that, yeah. that, that guy's You're so off the dumb. air, by the way. Right, he's off the air, and that's fine, but bro, that tells you the temperature of the water is so ignorant that they don't even try to think about what the fuck they say. I don't agree the with that. The media is the biggest machine that, that runs this, and so when you look at the NFL that can make these decisions two, three years ago about well, we actually have been doing this and doing that. It's because they don't give a fuck. They know how to run the media machine to spin it. Let's sit down in a meeting with Jay-Z and get this next year running up and, up and going with performances. The media won't have they anything have to do with the, the, the media amount won't of money. Have anything to do with it. The, 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 the owners, the people that are behind None of that machine. will matter. None of that will matter when people who have gotten less money over the last three years come back and sue the NFL for paying them less money because they're black and stupid, right? They're going to pay more money out now because they did that. Whether even if even and if I'm wrong and society does organization, bro. Oh my god! The, if okay, if that's true, then why pay them less money in the first place? Like if that's true, if money doesn't matter to these people at all, because why do it? Because they can. That's bullshit. They're, they did it because they thought it was going to make them money. I mean, that's why they did it. I mean, come on. You really think so that it wasn't a money decision? NFL, bro. You really think that it wasn't about money? Like, you really don't think it had anything to do with money when they made that decision? It has to do with who can we take money from? Dana? But why? Wait, wait, wait. Why take money because from them? It's a nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. They don't need the money. Put it like this. They don't need it. If these kids are out here trick-or-treating, I'm a big dog. You can't have it both ways. You can't say that they took the money to have more money, but when it comes back to bite them in the ass, it doesn't matter because they don't care about money. It can't be both sides. They either care about the money or they don't care about the money. It's one or the other. It can't be both. We're like this, right? We're like this, right? Yeah. Like I said, I I can see all these kids trick or treat, right? Okay. I'm going to take bag and take all the chocolate and candy bars out because I want it. Right, but but but, but you're I'm saying a working adult that I could go to H E B and go to the grocery store and actually buy me my own candy. But that's not your argument was that you don't but eat I, chocolate. I, right? So why steal the chocolate, chocolate if you don't eat chocolate. chocolate? That's not what I'm saying. It's okay. about the power. They don't give a fuck. When I know these little kids are like trick or treating and I want all the chocolate bars out of your bag, little homie, it don't cost me no money. That is your, your that chocolate is, out your bag. <laughs> That has never I been my experience with. I can with, also, I can also I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, all right. Put it like this, right? It's never been my experience, and when when rich say. people are making decisions that have to do with money, it's not hasn't have anything to do with money. That's never that been my that experience. Don't, that don't mean it is the this. That don't mean that that's the law. That just hasn't been your experience. You see what I'm saying? Stand back. And then take what you experience as one facet, and then look Still. at could these motherfuckers be so like when car, fuck, and then when dive car, deep into that and see what you come up with. So like when car companies have a car that they know is dangerous, and they do all the math and calculate: is it going to cost more for us to recall the car? or to just pay out lawsuits when they happen. They're not doing that because of money. They're doing it because they just like watching people die in cars or what? I don't like. I love that though. That, that, that's I love that action. shit though. That, that, that there is a calculation that they there. decide whether they have to like actually notify everybody or not. And they put everything, the amount of how much it'll cost to do a, a, a recall versus how much it costs to pay out the lawsuits that come. And whichever one is is greater is the one they pick to do. Right. There has to look. The truth of the matter is, as much as we don't like to admit it, I don't care if five people die. But five people are going to die in every car that's made. If you you can't can't do it like that. It's not. But if it's it's a possibility, you don't think they're not going to come on, bro. I'm just saying, every every product like hamburgers. I mean, if you didn't put out a hamburger because some five people might get sick and die, we wouldn't have hamburgers. I mean, like, 
which you're talking well, about millions it, it, of people. It it's got to be, be a bigger number than that. It's got to be a bigger number than that. They'd have to be able to prove liability that it was the actual hamburger that killed them. And they got, they got, like, teams, there is. I mean, that's what I'm saying is. They got teams of lawyers that can prove that it was not. But my, my point is with products, I mean, Tylenol, you, you, Tylenol is going to kill people and we're going to know that it killed some people, right? But you're talking about billions of people that take Tylenol, right? I mean, billions but even of people. Then, even then you'll still have to prove liability that they took you it. You can, but that, that's my point is even if you can, you, you can't, nobody can put out a product that services billions of people and it not hurt or kill anybody. I mean, that's just impossible. Like it's too many people, like there are too many variables. Some people just don't react the way that everybody else reacts to shit. And even if it is the Tylenol's fault, and I mean, Tylenol is a perfect example. We know for a fact that people die because of a reaction to Tylenol every year. Like that's, that's a proven fact. It, we know that it's the Tylenol. The FDA knows it. The government knows it. Everybody knows it. And they still let Tylenol put Tylenol out on the shelves because it's a, you're talking about a 0. 0.000 something margin of people. And, and you don't not let a product that helps, you know, 20, 2 billion people be out on the market because there's a one in zero, zero. I mean, like that's just every product, every product that services that many people ready, is ready, going to kill some ready, people. Victor? So why did they have that? Why did they have the exact opposite response to COVID? Because COVID didn't kill point zero 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 something people. Like, what do you mean? In, in comparison, in, in comparison, it was like how many? It's like two million people or something now. I mean, that's that's not in comparison to how many people who caught it and actually died from it. Yeah, I mean the numbers are nothing compared to the allergic reaction to Tylenol. I mean they're they're not they're nowhere close. You're talking about like talking about uh, it's like though. it's like twenty people a year or something, as opposed to like two million people in a twelve month period. I mean that's not that's nah, nowhere close to, to each other. How many people to flu kill? How many people to flu kill? Well, uh, but that okay. I mean, but that's a different argument. Like your argument was no, why do they allow the same thing? Numbers. We're looking at numbers and ratios, right? Right. Yeah, we're looking at numbers and ratios. That's exactly right. Yes. How many people die from Tylenol? Numbers. COVID. Like, numbers. I'm gonna look Blue. it up. It's it's gonna be numbers. it's gonna pale in comparison. I, I don't understand. Look like it will pale in comparison. I'm answering your question. You just don't seem to like the ty- Tylenol numbers are significantly lower than COVID. So was the flu, by the way. I mean, they're not nothing. Let me, let me, let me I gotta take some Tylenol real quick. <laughs> so, so, uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, that. That. Sorry, I'm looking it up for you. Oh, shit. I don't care what I'm pre approved for. Get out of here. Four hundred and fifty deaths each year, which admittedly is fifty deaths. Yeah, which is, I think which I is funny because it proves more the point I was originally making. <laughs> but I mean, still. Wait, 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 wait. question, question. Okay. Right. You just looked up that four hundred and fifty people have died from Tylenol consumption per year. Yeah, that's on the autopsy report. Right. I mean, yeah. Ah, uh, they have killed 450 people that are still on the market. That's 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 the point. That's the point I'm trying to make is that's why those equations exist. Now, unfortunately, a lot of companies use it when it's something they could easily fix, right? Or something that's going to kill a whole lot more people than a car should on average, right? And so that's different, right? And we need to worry about when they're taking advantage of that calculation. But the fact of the matter is every product that's out on the market is, is going to kill people. Like it doesn't even really matter what it is. Pillows kill people every I'm day. Gonna, I got to go grab my clothes. Y'all All right. Um, um, it doesn't matter what it is. You can't, you can't sell a product to that many people and just based on bad luck not have some you know some bad experience with the product even death right i mean that's the thing when people are really upset when they find out that a car company knows that 
five people are going to die from their car and they don't do anything about it. I mean, way more than five people die in a fucking Explorer every year. I mean, what are you talking about? Like, of course they do. And, and so most of them are because they're driving badly or some other shit, but it's also because every once in a while, somebody doesn't weld on a fucking axle the way they should have and the fucking car falls apart. I mean, that just, what's going to happen? Um, but I got to say, I can't, I mean, Dot's entitled to his opinion, but you're going to have a hard time convincing me that that decision had nothing to do with money. I, I yeah, mean, yeah, I yeah. don't know how you thing, get there. The only thing that I, I can say is that also, and this is the whole rich people too, they like to hang on to their money as long as possible. Agreed. So paying out, paying out, let's say, Let's say half. Let's say a million dollars, two million dollars this year versus paying out two million dollars next year. They still make the interest off that two million dollars for a year, you know. So they're yes. still making money as long as it's in their pockets. As long There's as no way. It. I mean, if, if you're just talking interest, right? A rich person. I mean, you, you, rich person well, looks to invest their money if they're typically making somewhere like above eight or nine percent, which is what they would make not doing anything with their money at all, right? And so, right. absolutely. Right. I there's I have a hard time believing that this shit is gonna cost him less than eight or nine percent. I mean, come on, like well, shit. well, so far it hasn't really how when did the story break? Uh today or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean that it's a lawsuit, so I mean that's how you get money, right? Obviously, so this one person basically well, no, it was it was a it's a class action. I don't know how many uh, that it does does it takes to make a class action or not, but it was more than one player. Okay. Uh, and um, you got so a lot of right. Yeah. Right now, all they're doing is going back and re-evaluating the people that they were supposed to give money to in the first place, and are probably going to have to give money that they should have done should have right. done within the last. Oh, and it was 2013 was when they had this okay. agreement. All right. So it was 2013. So the last seven eight, seven eight years. They're gonna have to reevaluate all those players, which is funny because it was like, I don't know, two thousand players that had uh, asked for money. No, let me let me check this. Let's see, forty five thousand, forty five hundred former players uh, sued the league for concealing concussions. That's not right. To date, more than two thousand former players have filed dementia claims, although fewer than six hundred have received compensation. So 25% will 20% something like that. Yeah. And that's the assuming that, you know, that number isn't mostly because <laughs> they were black and fell under the number or fell above the number because exactly. of the points they weren't getting. So not only are you looking at the 600 cases that get, you know, reevaluated, right? And 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 you know, I don't know if I'm if I'm the NFL if I want it to be a class action suit or not because um I, you know, you're talking about every bite at the apple is a chance for a jury to award punitive damages, which you would have to imagine a lot of people are going to want to fucking do in this case. I mean, you know, punitive damages, you don't have like, you don't even like, you don't ask for punitive damages. There's no offer of proof as to why you deserve punitive damages. That is literally the jury saying what you did is so disgusting that we are punishing you by giving this person who we're not even sure deserves this money. No, I mean, not just, you know what I mean? Like when they, yeah, yeah. when they offer a hundred million dollars in punitive damages, it's not because they necessarily think the plaintiff deserves a hundred million dollars. It's because they want you to pay it. That's the only sure, reason they're sure. doing yeah. it. Yeah. Every time one of these players sues, that's another chance for a jury to be like, this is disgusting. I'm going to fucking award a hundred million dollars just because you're a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like, this is a class action suit, I guess. It's 4,500 former players. There you go. There you go. And so I don't know which one is better or worse. I'm not an attorney. I would imagine getting it all done with one fucking, you know, <laughs> damages or not, right? I mean, you also run the chance that they don't do it and, and then you don't have to worry about it. And again, so I would think this is probably the better option for them. But I'm, 
they're going to get so much fucking money. I mean, especially in today's climate, they're going to get a ton of fucking money for that alone. Like, there's no way they're not going to pay out the fucking asshole for this. And if they don't, we can have this conversation in eight years when the (laughs) class action suit is over. And, you know, but they're going to. I mean, this is not going to be... I can't... I can't imagine. And if somehow... I mean, obviously there's people that are better at determining this than I am, but if they do somehow end up coming out better than they would have, it's going to be by the grace of fucking God. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, I can't imagine anybody with any sense was like, yeah, no matter what happens, you'll make more money this way. It just, I mean, it's just a stupid fucking idea. On top of it, you know, then there's the fact, which I, you know, is more like I'm not I'm not like this is just me being you know picking the thing apart but like the bigger issue is that it's fucking racially disgusting I mean that's yeah, the fucking yeah, most absolutely. fucked up part about it for sure that's the worst part about it I'm just saying when I see stuff like this when when I can see the math and say oh that's really disgusting but it's going to make them richer then I at least makes sense right i mean yeah, like yeah, people right, are racist right. and people are greedy and i understand that those things exist i don't agree with them but i know about them right and and right. i can say oh he's a greedy asshole that realized he can make more money this way that sucks right, but right. that happens right this doesn't even seem to be that to me this seems to well, be it's honestly that it, it's somebody somewhere or a group of somebody somewhere thought they could really get away without finding. Obviously, Apparently. they didn't want to find out. Right. They didn't want anyone. Right. I mean, that was of course. that wasn't the plan. You know. Oh, yes. So, right. uh, yeah. So I just to me, it feel like it. they had to been eating their like stupid weedies like that week or whatever. I mean, I just it like God, that's a massive fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it just somebody was not earning their paycheck on that decision. <laughs> <laughs> risk management was unfold. yeah whoever did that calculation like forgot their calculator or some shit i don't know <laughs> oh my goodness that just it seems is, really it's, it's the nfl so it's another example of you know the nfl is built off the exploitation of, of black athletes you know i mean that's just it's been that way for years and years and years yeah yeah I really, I, again i'm not arguing that uh, that i i i i, I would codify that with the extra exploitation of black athletes because i think the nfl exploits athletes period i don't you know i mean like they they maybe they certainly probably do it more with black athletes than everybody else Some larger but, scale Definitely yeah a larger but, scale but they they have had no problem even before you black athletes were popular in the nfl treating the players like shit and making as much money off of them as they possibly could that has been their their mo from the get-go um that part doesn't surprise me um yeah but i still think that even if you that's what i'm saying is even if you don't have a problem exploiting people there's a difference between not caring and being dumb and it it, it, i would think even in two right even in 2013 the NFL isn't the billion dollar industry it is because they're stupid, right? Yeah, Maybe it's yeah. because they're greedy and racist and shitheads. That might be yeah. true, but it's certainly yeah. not because they're dumb. And this just seems to be a big old well, fucking still, pile of dumb on top of everything else. It's still, it's even like the, and it's true, like the Kaepernick thing or whatever. For uh, uh, years, the NFL was like totally against it and that it was, he was against armed forces in America and he should just leave the country or other crap. And then, Two years later, after the climate change, they say, oh, you know what? We are really sorry about that earlier thing. And we yeah. were completely wrong. Right. And I, and I, again, don't disagree with you that there is some similarities here. But I, I could say you could argue with the first one that was more complicated, right? Like, like I don't I didn't disagree with what he was doing, but even in agreeing with him, I can't say that it like watching somebody kneel during the national anthem doesn't like subconsciously like I don't like it like I, I yeah. understand no, why he I did right. it and I was the um, same way and originally yeah, and, he was actually just sitting he wasn't even kneeling he was sitting right and that really pissed me off you know yeah right um I understood why he was doing it and so 
I overrode that natural reaction in my head. But I mean, that is a very controversial thing that that there are people very adamantly on the both sides of that, right? But right. rich people typically aren't ever on the other side of spending more money or not, which is why on this one, it, it, like, it, I could, you know, I get the argument of there might be racist people in the organization who don't have a problem with taking advantage of black people. Are you sure? Yeah, right. Like, I'm sure that's true. But they all tend to like their money a lot. <laughs> like, that's always like pretty sure. much, you know, like you know, with rich people. Well, you, I mean, that's one of the reasons why they they said uh, they uh, uh, did what they did with Kaepernick is because people that were actually buying commercial time started, uh, you know, pulling right. their contracts, not being happy with it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, exactly. Exactly. So I think with that you had people within the organization and team owners and shit who didn't like it. Plus the backing of the fact that they had sponsors who were outraged by it as well. And so again, I mean, that that's one of those things, like I like to use the word nuance a lot. There's a lot of nuance to that situation. Right. And, and, and we at like, it would be great if we could do a better job of like coming together as a society and figuring out what we think about something as opposed to just like throwing tinter tantrums like 10 year olds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, and, but that one I mean, is one that I get, like I talked I about to saying, people. This one is really ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this one's just nuts. This one's just stupid. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like there's like no nuance here. Yeah. You know, like just straight out says black people are stupider than white people. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, look, this is not 1920 you can't just yeah. say that shit anymore yeah. like everybody knows that it's even the, if you think it you can't say it the, the, air, the, the black people are too stupid to fly airplanes yeah. black people are yeah. too stupid to uh, fight the in the military a, uh, yeah, yeah yeah right be an officer all that crap Right. All that stuff. Exactly. And it's not just too stupid, unfortunately, either. It's, you know, too violent, unpredictable, you know, blah, 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 a bunch of other bullshit. Oh, in right? this case, it's straight up cognitive. Right. No, <laughs> this, up right. in this case, no, I'm yeah. saying with other stuff like the military, it wasn't oh, yeah, just yeah. that they were stupid. It was it was going to, you know, cause too much chaos within the ranks and, uh, you know, yeah, white people. Yeah. Yeah, blah, 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 right. Taking exactly. orders, yeah, yeah. The yeah. thing is that you got to you gotta maybe appreciate the fact that if you're in an institution where you've convinced somebody to climb up a hill that they know they're going to die on, you can probably convince them to share a bunk with a black dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like even if he doesn't like it, he's made it very clear he's going to do whatever the fuck you tell him to at this point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm just saying, if you can give a guy a shitty fucking rifle and boots and no socks and like stick him in a swamp for four months and tell him to sit there and take shots at him all day, you could probably get him to do just about anything you want him to do, you know? They don't have to like it. That's kind of the, that's the uh, motto of the military. You, you don't have to like it. You just got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> God bless him for it. Yeah, that, that was a short press release right there. <laughs> they should get rid of all those other. You know, we do more by not. You know, yeah, all, all you can be, other... all that shit. It's no, just no. Yeah, you're gonna do the shit we tell you to, whether you like it. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great on posters. <laughs> At least it's honest, right? Did you ever see that movie? Uh, I think it was called Crazy Crazy People. And it's uh, Dougley Moore. Uh, you remember Dougley Moore? Uh, I he remember Dougley Moore. Liked he, him. he passed away, right? He was fucking hilarious. He did those Arthur movies where he was in yeah, trouble. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was awesome. He's great. Uh, he I think did... those, guys are, those guys are amazing. The ones that, that are not, um, like, uh, practically handsome or beautiful or... They're just kind of awkward looking and still like make a great like yeah acting yeah. career you gotta <laughs> love how in movies though they always manage to have a really hot partner 
Yeah, like, that's true. That's true. Hollywood has totally decided that no matter how ugly the leading person is, that should have nothing to do with the quality of mate they can attract. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> In my experience, it's not impossible, but it doesn't happen 99% of the time like it does on, on movies and TV shows. <laughs> Freaking uh, uh, Danny DeVito. How did yeah. that guy get into movies? I mean, he's like four foot nothing. <laughs> he's <is> great. <laughs> I mean, some things you just uh... yeah, but sometimes you have to like, how did the camera actually stop on him <laughs> for him to like prove that he was great? You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Some people they want it bad enough and try hard enough. It's gonna be hard to keep them out. Um, yeah. what I love that, that little dude. Oh, so he had a movie called Crazy People, where yeah, he was. Yeah. Uh, an ad campaign guy and he had like a mental breakdown and ended up in a crazy house. And as a joke one night, he, he like, instead of like trying to come up with creative things about the product, he just like did really honest shit with him. Right. So it's like, like Porsche, um, not big enough to have sex in, but when you get, but you'll definitely have sex when you get out of it. <laughs> uh, the Sony, uh, they did the Sony one <laughs> where it has like white people like trying to put together electronics and, and, and they're like really tall, you know, they're standing at the workbenches and shit is like flying everywhere. And then it shows uh, 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 Sony's what is it Japan or China? Japan, right? Say Japan. Japanese. I'm say Japan. Yeah, yeah. All right. it's China, I apologize if I get that China. wrong. Yeah. Uh, let's say Japanese, whatever it is. Uh, and you know, they're they're all, they're all short, so they're like really close <laughs> to the shit that they're working on. Oh, no, and then at the real? end, it's a uh, Sony because ca- Caucasian people are just too damn tall, right? And so he does like <laughs> tons of these, right, as a joke, right, just like blowing off steam. And then somebody comes by to pick up his shit and takes the wrong one. And oh, and no. so like all these ads go out, they do billboards and commercials and all Are this you serious? shit. Serious. Yeah, and everybody's yeah. freaking out, except then everybody fucking loves them because they're honest, right? And it's yeah, like, yeah. why haven't we thought of this before? And he like becomes a big deal. And the, he has all the crazy people helping him write the the truthful campaigns. That's awesome. It's fucking hilarious, dude. There's uh and you're absolutely right, because Daryl Hannah is the is yeah chicken it <laughs> right it, yeah exactly and like one of them's for a scary movie and, and it's like it it, it won't just, it's not just scary it'll it'll scare the it'll kill what is it? it's like something like it'll scare the shit out no it's like uh it's, it's something about like it'll kill you it's so scary it's gonna kill you or something like that Jeez. yeah it, there's so many funny i can't remember um can't remember all of them. But there's some really fucking funny ones. Well, I'm I'm still it, I think maybe it was Jag- Jaguar. Too small to get hey, laid. Yeah, really? oh, no. Definitely getting laid. Yes, when you yeah, get I heard out. you. Okay, <laughs> all right, I'll grab that. Hold on. <laughs> That's my favorite one, I think. <laughs> Because it's so true, right? Yeah, I mean, that's why you true, buy yeah. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fucking hilarious. Oh, shit. <laughs> You'll definitely get laid when you get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. I know. Dot, are you back or not? What did he just say? He, he, he said he'd come back. He, he, he was right. left and then he, he, he came back and then he left. All right. Well, uh, the, I mean, I think we played out how ridiculously stupid the NFL is. I um, think so. Yeah. Um, mine was um, now I want to see crazy people oh you got to it's fucking hilarious I, I, now I want to see it you know what's funny too is make sure it's crazy people because there was also one that came out right around the same time that had well, oh you looked it up right because you saw Dan uh, uh, yeah. what's her yeah. name was in it um, there's another one with uh, what's his name the original Bat. well not the original Batman but the um the first movie the first batman movie um what's his name he's great too keaton yeah michael keaton yeah michael keaton um and he is crazy and like is in a crazy house with other crazy people and they they're going on a field trip and the doctor that's taking them gets like mugged and 
I don't know if he gets killed or kidnapped or something happened, but they're, they're essentially all on their own in New York. Yeah, yeah. And that's a funny fucking movie, too. That Both of them are great. They're di- very kind of different from each other, but they're both great movies about crazy people, crazy <laughs> institutions, which probably wouldn't get made anymore because we aren't supposed to laugh at that. Uh, but they're both I know, hilarious. Right? You can, like, lose that whole, like, yeah. Uh, a genre now because you can't yeah. do that anymore because we can't laugh at ourselves anymore yeah, yeah. for sure um anyways check them both out uh the my topic is college tuition and i don't even know where to jump in because there's so many issues i have with college tuition first of all uh college tuition has, the, the cost of college tuition has increased at three times the rate of inflation every year for like the last 20 years. Jeez Louise. Yeah, it is the cost of tuition since like 85 to today is I think three or four times what it was. Um, And they're not giving us anything more than they used to. Like it, in in fact, I would say quite the opposite. The, in in the eighties, about 15% of college students were getting A's. Now it's like 65% or some shit. And we all know Jeez. it's not because people are smarter today because we know that's not true, right? It's because it's become like, instead of an institution, it's a fucking business, right? And like the people buying the fucking college tuition want A's. And so they're getting more fucking A's now. Yeah, and yeah. and on top of that, the college campuses are doing all this shit to like, get, you know, they have like, I think Texas Tech has like the largest water park in the state as part of yep. the college campus. Yep. I, Another, I was actually, I worked at uh, UTSA, not, I worked for them at some point, and they were putting in a water park, uh, like a lazy river that also doubled as like a movie theater, outdoor movie theater and stuff. Yeah, the, the one at Texas center. Tech is, the, I think, the largest, the longest lazy river in Texas or some shit. Uh, awesome. there's another college that that rebuilt the Playboy Grotto. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's they have like the pool and the grotto and the hot tub. Isn't that and all in the that same shit. category as the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And all of this, you know, when in now now you you know your need for a college education to do your job is more so than it's ever been, right? Yep, I mean, yep. now even when you get your college degree, most of the time in order to continue the job that you got with the college degree, you have to do continual education just to do a job you're already doing well. I mean, what's that about? You know what yeah, I mean? It's ridiculous. Okay. Not to mention all the jobs that people are you know, already doing and in order to advance in a position instead of just doing it based on the skill sets that they've developed by doing the job, they have to go take a class that typically has nothing to do with the job that they're doing in order to move up. I mean, it's, you know, like more and more, our country is essentially saying either go pay a fuck ton of money to get a college degree or you know, be, you know, you know, or you don't get to be middle class, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you're, yeah. you're going to be no. poor, essentially. Be poor, Where, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's fucking it's insane. And now they're saying, well, let's just pay for everybody to go to college. And you got to wonder if it make like, let's say I don't want to go to college or college isn't something that I think I can do or, I'm you know, is going to benefit me or not. Now, I not only have to pay for you to go to college, but I have to pay for you to go to college and have the world's biggest fucking water park when you go there. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, I have to pay for that? What the fuck? That's insane. Like, why? Would, I don't want to do that. Like, even if I thought it does make sense that, like, a higher, a higher educated society is going to be a better society which i do tend to agree with right i mean when we're actually teaching them shit that's worth learning that makes sense but like 
even if I believe in that, I should be paying for the very basic, like you getting smarter, not you getting to live in a nicer dorm and have a better place to party and all this ridiculous <laughs> bullshit. They, they added to the engineering program. What's that? Designing I'm only the assuming. water park. Designing the water park. <laughs> Designing the water park? Yeah. Okay. And I'm cool with that. What I'm not cool with is no matter who designs it, somebody's still got to pay to build that shit. <laughs> and uh, if they're going to uh, have those, the college those, students those build it. In but that's not. In but that. But that's not what's happening, right? The, it's coming from higher tuition fees is where the money's coming from. Um, if, if that or were the case. To balance out. To balance out. Is it, though? Uh, you weren't here at the beginning, right? But uh, college tuition increases at three times the rate of inflation every year. It's you, gone up. You want to know why? Sure. Because the, the information to get a college degree you can find online. You could can, you can Google YouTube and Google most of the trades that people have. So it's costing more now. For one, for two, when you look at what it, it, it doesn't take the, the, the proverbial uh, quote, or, or how do you say, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, saying, I, I guess, not even a quote. It doesn't take a college degree to start a business, but it takes one to work at that business. Sure. Okay. When you could go online now and, and find all these courses, all these troubleshooting, all these, the, the library has free courses on like, you know, cybersecurity, C plus and all these different things, you know, they don't tell you, but they're there for free. So the institution that was created is now losing money. They're not because tuition, I mean, like, uh, so uh, the only way to make that money back to offset it is to raise the cost. Except that's why that, I try to finish saying. <laughs> okay, which would make sense if you put were it like seeing. This, put it like this. Let me put it like this, right? Uh, here's an analogy. I understand what you're saying. When, when when the internet came about and everybody started sending emails, it, it, it the post office took a hit. That's because people stopped mailing shit. College. Well, so what's but, happening? So let me make my point. You could get you could gain the same knowledge. Well, it's not going down. Just, go ahead. Enrollment's not going down. College enrollment's not going down. It's increasing. College campuses are building larger campuses to to do that. We're programmed to go to college after high school. Yes, but that's that's, that's a part of human indoctrination. Like, but in order for them to need to charge more money because you start a family or you join the military. Those yes. are the three outlets at the high school, bro. Right. But going back to your point, which is that they have to charge more money because you can get this education without going to college. The only way that would impact their bottom line is if more people were going online instead of enrolling in college. And if more people are enrolling in college now than ever before, that's not an excuse for needing more money because now they have more They're students than they ever have. Online. They need to charge more. Okay. People will pay. So your your point. Like like, I'll, I'll you, give you an example of what you're meaning by, by the price of something mm-hmm. being increased, even though statistics show that there's been a decrease. Do you remember the clothing oh, line, uh, Lacoste and Izod, the little alligator? Yes. Yeah. Back in the day, you can get that shit a solo search. Yep. Okay. What they did is they upped the price of it to appear that the value is more. That's different. And it's not the case. No, it's, right. it's, it's, the same, it's the same methodology. You're saying that to uh, keep people from going on the people internet, have, this, this, they're charging this, you know, more money to no. make them think it's more important that they don't? No. What I'm saying is you have multimillionaire CEOs, all these people, they, 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 they only got high school education. And they've become multi-millionaires, successful Some business them, yeah. and entrepreneurs the whole nine because the information is widely available on the internet. What's well, the point of college now? So now the inversion tactic is raise the price of college, 
because not as many people are going. So we still got to. That's not true. More people are going. More people are going, not less. Okay. Right. That's okay. that's my point. Is that would make total sense if they had lower enrollment then they would need more money to run the college because they had less people paying to go to school, but they don't. They, most campuses are expand. Most like state colleges can only have a certain amount of students based on the size of the campus, right? It's UT's right, right, biggest right. problem is they're landlocked and they can't grow. And so they can't, they can't grow to accept the fact that there are so many more people that want to go to UT now than there were 10 years ago. But most campuses are just buying more land. UTSA is growing and growing and growing. They keep buying more land. They keep I, expanding. I, I, live right, I live right here in the midst of UTSA. You, yes, you know what I'm talking about. Too. You know so what I'm talking it, about. It's They're a constantly ghost growing. Town, bro. It's been a ghost town for the last two years. I, I mean, enrollment Everything numbers would suggest here. otherwise. Because people are taking courses online. I mean, the enrollment numbers would, would disagree with you. People are have yeah, not Yeah, everybody can it. enroll. I'm going to enroll online. I'm not going to physically move my child down to Texas to have no, them no, no. I'm talking about, apartment. like, the enrollments of these colleges, like UT, A&M, Texas Tech. Like, their their numbers are not dropping. Like, they're not seeing less enrollment each right. year. That's okay. just not, right, not so strictly not true. Let, let's, let, well, let's then, let's then look at the difference in how you say if you go on Amazon and you buy a book off of Kindle, it's like $3. You buy the paperback, it's $10, right? Whatever the case may be, right? Let's okay. divide that number versus people who are actually enrolling in the college, physically in the courses at the campus or enrolling online. Is there a difference in that? Those I, I numbers? Don't. I don't know, but I mean, that would just indicate that people who weren't going to college at all are, are bettering themselves through other sources. But that's still, I mean, like to, to use your scenario of the mail, right? If, if when Amazon came out, people who just didn't use the post office at all or UPS no, or whatever. I'm not talking about Amazon. I'm talking about sending, I wrote a letter and I'm going to go buy a 35 cent stamp, put it in the mail and mail it to you. Versus, hey, what's your email address? I was going to see an email. I'm okay. not talking about Amazon order. I'm sorry, I'm email. I'm sorry. You're right. The dot, the dot that's, com yes, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. And that that's more to the point. That exactly. Because when I was saying Amazon, that didn't make sense. You're right. So if people who were not mailing letters at all before started using email, right, and they were email and the internet grew and it didn't have any effect on the mail company, Right. And in fact, or the post, the post office. Right. This is the scenario you'd be looking at, like the Internet came out and people who never used the post office started using it. But people who use the post office still used it. And in fact, the amount of people using the post office continued to grow. But there was also this thing called the Internet where people who were never going to use the post office use the Internet. Like that You're jumping doesn't past the window, though. You're jumping past the window to where the post office took a death. I'm not. That's, this blow. isn't. This they, isn't they what a devastating blow. No, Which no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing that because this is a hypothetical thing that I'm using to compare to your analogy. This isn't what actually happened. What actually happened was people stopped mailing letters because email is way more fucking efficient. And so the post office is going out of it. That's what actually happened. But what right, I'm saying. But, they, but, but now they're back on course because they incorporate with USPS, UPS and couriers. To, the, to ship your Amazon things because not everything is online. That helped. I mean, they're still struggling big time and will probably go out of business, but that did help. But, but again, what I'm saying is comparing what's happening with college to the post office it, it isn't an accurate comparison because what's happening with colleges is even if there are people that are availing themselves of the online option that otherwise would have never gone to college, people who were going to go to college are still going and in larger numbers. And yeah. so yeah. the fact that there are these other options out there aren't impacting the income of the colleges that existed. They are in fact making more money than they've ever made. Um, so, okay. So, okay. So then if that's the case, then that's including the online college versus excluding it as a difference. So that, that's what I was asking. I, oh, what I'm, when you know, look, when you look, when you that's look not at including people, online colleges. We're, we're, I'm talking okay. about the amount of people that are signing colleges, up for Texas Tech are more now enrollment. than they've ever been. I'm okay. saying me, people that are going. Let me make it simple for you. Let me make okay. it simple for you, right? All right. 
Yep. At a point, you could go to a college physically. Now that I've made it a convenience store accessibility, anybody can go. Therefore, now, now that you have more people coming, we can raise the price a couple cents to get more profit. You have that. You have that possibility, or you have the possibility that they're hurting for physical enrollment, so they have to raise the price. I don't know. I'm only asking you. What do you think the trajectory is based off of this plan? I'm is seeing, it because is it because of COVID hit? Nobody could go to anywhere, but everybody now could go everywhere around the world online. So no. now everybody's taking college from home. Let's raise the price of it because no. we're only going to profit more. No, that's not what's happening because this is trends that what we're talking about since like 1982, and COVID is like you know 12 months ago, right? And I'm saying since so, the okay, 80s. Okay. For whatever reason, uh, my guess would be that it has to do with how many student loans are getting paid back and, and, and them trying to recoup money that they're not getting, that they're supposed to be getting from people that already went to college and are supposed to be paying for the college that they went to, but can't. But that's or, that's or the don't. bank's problem. Not no, yeah, you're right. Trade, you're right. Trade. You're right. It is. What? Okay. So to answer, trade. yeah, I mean, to answer your question. When I say enrollment is going up, I'm saying schools like Tech and AM and Harvard and Princeton and all these places that have been like what we know of as like your typical college, their individual enrollment rates are not going down. People are not going to those places less now than they were in the 80s or the 90s. They're, everybody still understands because it's true that like it, you those know. Those are the HWUs, those are historical white universities. I mean, the ones I, sure, but like. They're going, they're going to always have enrollment. Those are just the ones I named. I'm saying college campuses as a whole across the country are not seeing lower enrollment numbers lately than they did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. In fact, with there being a larger population than there was 10, 20 years ago, there there are more people trying to enroll in your basic if you want to call it, you know, mortar and brick colleges as opposed to online colleges than ever before. Like people. But do you are, see how you laugh when you said that mortar and brick? Like it's not even necessary. That's the point. Well, you giggle when you said mortar and brick. Like who goes to a physical college when you can go online? That's well, the ideology. Yeah, but what's the argument there? Because all I'm asking is, I'm not saying should people go to a more like all i'm asking is why are rates increasing so dramatically and is it fair now with because these one, that, that's why i said because of one or two options either one the brick and mortar they're they're paying paying it off by raising the rate or option two everybody's going so let's raise the rate because we're just going to profit now we don't have to worry about the brick and mortar i i, I deal with this put it like this right I deal with this going into office at my job, right? I have no one that comes in because of COVID. Everybody's scared to come in a job because of COVID, right? These buildings already exist. These sensors have already been built. They were, they're already being paid for. They're already part of a lease. All this great stuff, but the money is being wasted because this it still has to be paid for. I would what, argue... What, 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 what I get That's to see not is not accurate with you have this full call. You, I'm not saying it's accurate. I'm only using this as an example. What I get to see every day is I come into office every day, right? I go in every day to a 300 plus call center floor that's empty, and it's just me. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. This building still has to be paid for. All the stuff still has to be accounted for. I mean, most of these so, colleges, the, the buildings don't still need to be paid for. But go ahead. I mean, these right, are but you also have like that's why, that's why around for example, like 50, 60, that's, 70, that's 80. Why, that's why. That's why I use example of UTSA. I live over here by there. I saw how many apartment buildings were put up. Right. How to many account for all the extra people who want to go to school. There. That that were at before COVID though. That were planning on coming, bro. There's so many apartment complexes over there that they're now empty. I see them. I drive by them every day. They're empty. No one's living in them. They're, that's, okay. And, and, and I, talk, I talk with one of the landlords at, at the complexes. They have to still, they, they built these in, in the essence of, oh, these will be new, posh level style complex 
businesses, and then COVID hit. Yeah, but so they don't. Yeah. They they're not. They're unable to to lease out these apartments. So what's happening is, you said that most parents are afraid to have their. their go ahead, bro. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. You're good. Run it. Run it. I'm good. All right. So most of the apartment complexes aren't owned by the college campuses. So that's not their, you know, money problem that they're not renting out to 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 new students. They're, you know, if it's not a college dorm, then, you know those are private companies that are coming up in order to service the, you know, possible intake of, of, of people going to college there and, and needing a place to stay. Um, but I mean, those, they went up because enrollments are increasing and yeah, I'm, I'm, COVID obviously had an impact on that, but I don't think anybody is concerned that it's going to be a long-term effect. Like every, I haven't heard anybody I've, I've, listen to lots of conversations about you know college tuition college enrollment um whether or not the government should be relieving college debt whether or not the government should be paying for college tuition uh, lots and lots of podcasts and news specials and all kinds of shit that i've listened to not i've never heard a single expert can say that they're concerned about the possibility that people aren't going to go back to college as soon as the colleges are opening up which they are and people are already I, I literally i literally have these meetings every day at work just for people working right this working is, is my monday way my, my, different. My, my daily meeting and yes day. working and going into a Building is this is what I have meetings on at eight thirty every no nine o'clock yeah. every day. But I, I would argue that people wanting to come back to their office and people wanting to come back to a college campus are not comparable things. I mean, the fear yeah, is still the same. No, no it's not. No, it, no, it's because, not. Uh, there's one okay. big pull about colleges is that uh, people of that age want to be around other people. Of that exactly. Age. That's you what know, I'm saying. There, Most of the a, people well, were forced. Hold on, hold on. Most of those people like actually complained that their mental health went down because of their isolation. That they were supposed right. to be in groups of people, you know. Right. And right. They want to go right. back to the, the brick and mortar. Want to go right. back to the university. They want to be. Right. They want to be on campus. Right. Yeah. Right. And so but, that's what I'm saying. What happens, and I agree with you, but what happens is, is that you now have to risk those people who are wanting to. Children going to want to go to the playground, but that's the right. adults Damn have to right. make the decisions to drive them to the playground. So and that Sometimes. and that and that's what I'm telling you is is, yeah, is but, what's I mean, going on. Society, you have we're these not kids. We want to go be with our friends. Well, there are bigger there are bigger uh, issues at hand. But not so much any. Play. Not so much anymore, though, right? I mean, this yeah. you know, the government, the CDC, everybody. I mean, the place that I work at that has been abundantly cautious and realized that the majority of the people that work there can do their jobs from home just as well as they can do it from the office are taking everybody back to the office who wants to go back like in a couple of weeks. They're saying if you've been double vaccinated, they're not going to require you to wear a mask. Um, right. And, and so uh, it's a, how, how are they how are they knowing if you've been double vaccinated? That, uh, they, there we go. This is what we have in meetings. How How, how, how are they? What what are they putting in place to verify that you've been double vaccinated Taking without my word? I'm not going Taking back. Your word for it. No, yeah. I, I, I I'm not going back to the office, so I don't know all of them, but I know they're expecting you to show your vaccination card. Um, and um, I mean, and they have other stuff. And again, I haven't put a lot of thought into it because I'm not going, so it's not something that affects me. Um, but they have they've they've space stuff out a little bit differently to be extra cautious and you know and i think you know they, they they're requiring to see your vaccination card but you know if you decide to lie about getting your vaccination and then get sick because you showed up and you weren't vaccinated i mean you shouldn't have lied and said you got vaccinated you That's know what i mean like, <laughs> yeah so i don't know that they're that concerned about the fact that you know i mean what the cdc is saying we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago on the podcast the cdc is saying if you're somebody who's been double vaccinated it doesn't matter if somebody shows up who hasn't you have been you're safe they're the ones who aren't safe right, right. and so right. you want to lie about that and tell people you've been vaccinated and go into stores without your mask or go to a concert or where you know whatever and you get sick well then you either should have gotten vaccinated or shouldn't have lied and said you were vaccinated and kept your mask on but that's on you like you made that decision you know and i i 
don't really have much of a problem with that. Like, first of all, I think people should get vaccinated, right? I don't think people should be made to get vaccinated, but I think it's silly if you don't. But don't like fine you don't have to don't get vaccinated right it seems like there's going to be enough people that are going to get vaccinated that that we should be able to be a healthy country again even if people don't think it's a good you know if some people don't want to do it that would have been you know had there not been enough people getting vaccinated i think i would have been a little bit more upset about it but there is it seems to be that there's going to be so if you choose not to get vaccinated and open yourself up to a much higher risk of getting sick then you made that decision. You know, I mean, like you, you, you played the odds. You decided that you thought that getting the vaccination was more dangerous than, than getting COVID. And, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I hope you don't. <laughs> I hope people, I hope there's enough of us that got vaccinated that people that don't, don't get sick. Cause I don't want people to get sick, even if I don't agree with them. Um, but if you do, you know, like you, you made that choice, you know, like that was your decision to make. I think with kids, it becomes a whole lot different. School's more complicated um, a lot of kids can't get vaccinated. Right. Um, and, and so, you know, are we, what are we doing to make sure that the teachers who show up and say they've been vaccinated have been vaccinated? Are we making sure that the teachers have been vaccinated? I know of a school here um, where one of the parents is utterly pissed off because one of the teachers has just decided not to get vaccinated and the school doesn't want to get sued for forcing her to get vaccinated and doesn't seem to be concerned at all about getting sued by a dozen fucking parents because their kids got COVID from a fucking teacher who showed up without the vaccination. Um, and so they're not going to force her to get vaccinated. That shit is complicated. Um, but for adults, I mean, you know, if you don't want to get vaccinated, wear your fucking mask, you know, like, yeah, yeah. you know, cause you, you can very still easily get sick and not as easily as you could have, but, it's still not that fucking hard. People are still getting it all the fucking time. And, and, you know, you're taking a big chance by not doing it. But back to, <laughs> I know, right. We completely got off. Didn't we back to yeah, college tuition? What, what we were talking about is, you, you know, your two examples of either they're increasing um, tuition to make up for the fact that not as many people are rolling or, they have a good product that, you know, like they have a product that's highly in demand. And so it, why not, in, you know, that that's what you do, right? Supply and demand. People really want it. You increase the price to match the demand. Um, and it appears that is what's happening, right? Um, all right. But All right. So while y'all were arguing, I went ahead and looked up some stuff on the web. Uh, they said a lot of the driving factors for the increase in cost is exactly what you said. More people want to go they've actually increased the amount for funding for uh, loans, student loans and, and grants from the, uh, uh, from the government to, it used to be that you could only get a grant from the government if you were poor, if you were straight up, didn't have any money. But now they've increased the amount that you can get, it's called the middle class uh, movement or something. So they increase the amount of money your parents can make for you to actually get money from the government to go to college of course it's in loans you still have to pay them back they're just federally funded loans right so they've increased so, that and with them increasing that the colleges have also increased the numbers that of people that are coming in and the cost because of like you said demand uh, uh supply, and supply demand. and demand supply and demand also the government while the government has been increasing in the amount they loan out they have been decreasing the amount of funding for state funded colleges so they have been taking away funding or not grow not the funding has not been growing at the same rate as the student body by funding you mean grants um scholarships shit you don't have to pay no. back no i'm talking about actual funding for the college state oh for the college colleges. themselves right yeah, right right right, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. texas a m uh, UTSA, right? UG are getting Austin, less, right. Southwest. Can't, yeah, they're getting less money per capita. To subsidize, per, right? Exactly. Which you well, that, like? Why shouldn't they get less money? They're bringing in four times as much as they were two decades ago. Why the fuck should saying, the government subsidize? They're them? doing kind of like a chicken and the egg kind of thing. Which one's driving which? You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. they're, they're doing that, and then the increased amount of student services that they didn't use to, and that's your. Uh, uh, 
your uh, uh, waiting pool. water parks and grottos yeah. and movie theaters and <laughs> all shit the other data. stuff. Yeah. yeah, right. Which and, they, and in, in the article they talked about student insurance and stuff like that, but it's right. also you know the gyms. I, right. I used to go, uh, which uh, they're doing uh, because gym, people awesome. want to go. Right. They they they're trying to you know it's a competition. I mean it's business, right? They're trying to attract students to come to their school instead of another fucking school. And the same thing, it also mentioned the cost of professors. They're trying right. to get the better, more intelligent, more to give out job. Yeah. Yeah. To give professors. out the easier A's. <laughs> yeah. I just, I mean, look, that girl, uh, I, I, I'll admit I'm, I'm pulling some of this shit off. Uh, I, I, I will, uh, uh, Bill, uh, you know, to steal Bill Maher's joke, credit where credit is due. Um, he was talking about uh, what's that, you know, the remember the big college scandal where the rich parents were getting yeah, their kids sure. in high schools, right? The full house, the whole, yeah. the full house lady, all right? Yeah. I don't know how much of that story y'all listened to, but her daughter, once it all came out, when they interviewed her, was like, I don't really, you know, like, I, I, I'm not all that excited about going to college. Um, you know, I, I, I guess I'll go a little bit, but I would, I, but I don't want to miss out on the partying and on the, the experience. Yeah. Right. The college experience of partying and getting to know people and all, you know, all that shit. And that's what I'm saying is like, it seems like it's becoming a whole lot more about the experience than the education. And I'm not knocking the college experience. I think that part is great, but like you're talking about college. I mean, like you don't need a grotto to get drunk and have fun at college. Like people have been having the college experience this whole fucking time, regardless of what amenities the fucking college had, because all you need is like a fucking clearing in the woods and some fucking music <laughs> and a keg and you can have the goddamn college experience. You don't need the world's that's biggest we, water that's park. That's how we experience it. The ante is up nowadays. That's right. They, there's there's but, more but, colleges you can go to. So they have to try and influence you to go to their college and charge you more. And at the point of this is part, college, college shouldn't be a fucking looked at solely as a business right what we're creating more than ever and not that it didn't already exist before in society in our society is a society where you're blackmailed into taking out a fuck ton of college loans to get a degree that more often than not you don't fucking need in order to get a job you could do without it so that you can spend the next 30 years paying those fucking loans off because otherwise you're going to be poor. Those are your options. Yeah. Yeah. And that's ridiculous. That's crazy. It shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't be, you know, all these courses that you have to take in order to be able to continue to do the job um, because, you know, that you got with your college degree, that's just colleges making more fucking money. Like that's all they're doing is coming up with excuses to charge you more fucking money in order for you to keep living the lifestyle that you want to live. Or to even dream of living the right. lifestyle, you possibly live. having the lifestyle yeah. you want to live. Right, exactly. Yeah, because so many people, you know, rack well, up college t- debt and don't fucking get anything out of it. I will Dude, tell you that here in San Antonio, as far as high schools are concerned, concerned, I do like the uh, the availability of trade schools as an option to high school because there used to be uh, what was it? It was. Um, medical careers uh, uh, high school or something so if you were going into like the medical field you'd go to medical careers high school right and that would Trade lead schools. you into a college so that but this was actually made for like doctors and stuff but now they're starting to do it well now they're starting to do it actual trade schools where it's uh leads into welding leads into mechanics right. leads into different fields and stuff like that you can still get degrees on in and and perform a job and get a better paying job even in that industry there's a right. whole, there's a whole big one for the oil industry that, yeah. that funnels people into the oil industry and, and getting very well paying jobs non uh degree carrying jobs that that are, are I mean, worth it yeah i right and i think that is great i will say that we are unfortunately like while there has been a, gr- a growth in um, diplomas from trade schools, the majority of the growth has been in um, courses like like 
bullshit courses that aren't yeah. going to get you a job like fucking arts degree like you know and i oh. i don't oh. ha- <laughs> i'm not knocking the arts but a degree from a trade school is not going to be what gets you a job you know what i'm saying like you're either going to go get an art degree which might help you in the arts but getting a fucking bullshit degree from some stupid bullshit class is not what's going to um I, I don't think it's helping any of those people in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I think they're spending money they're not getting back, is my point. Not that there's anything wrong with the arts. Of course there isn't. Those are the, there's lots of things that you can do to make money, not to mention, you know, the, there's the whole, you know, part of deciding whether or not you're going to school for money or to, you know, or, you know your career is going to be based on money or doing something that you love. Um. But getting, you know, a degree from a eight month trade school, you know, in fine arts or literature, you know, poetry is not is not going to get anybody a fucking job is my point. And well, that's those, not the trade school that I'm talking about. You know, I know I'm you're not actual like welding and, and, and right. Uh, computer programming. There's, field, some, computer programming. there's some great computer. ones out there. There are some really uh, auto repair um like uh like electrical work um hvac plumbing there are a lot of great trade schools that you can go and get degrees from and get good jobs from i totally agree with you those aren't the ones that people like we've seen a massive growth i was just i don't know where the fuck i was just listening to something about this there's been a massive growth in the number of trade school degrees but the mass majority of that growth has been in degrees that doesn't actually help anybody do anything. Unfortunately, they're not, they're not going to the oil field classes that you're talking about. Astrology. And, is that what you're saying? <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Like poetry and, 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 and um, like shit like that. That's not helping them in any way. Um, not only, I mean, What's nice about a lot of trade schools is they are actually teaching you shit that's going to be helpful when you get the fucking job, which is supposed exactly. to be the point, right? Which Absolutely, is, yeah. Right. These are not only not giving them anything that's going to help them with any kind of job they want to get. It's not helping them get the job either. Like, it's yeah, just yeah. a bullshit piece of paper that they're spending a lot of money on so that they can say that they did something past high school, you know? Like, right, right. yeah. Yeah. But uh, that and, 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 and then that's the thing that that really upsets me is now we're talking about this all not being fair. Right. That that there shouldn't be, um, you know, massive debt related to wanting to do something better with your life. And so should we be relieving that debt or paying for people to go to college? But like I'm 40 something years old. Like, I guess technically I could go back to college. Of course I could go back to college. Okay. But it's going to be way harder for me now than when I was 18 years old. If college was free for everybody, I could have gone back to college and I'd have a college degree right now. Whereas the chances of that happening today are not nearly as good for me and lots of other people. And I'm going to be a big chunk of the people paying for these people to go to college and paying yeah, for the people that already went to college. But you can't look at it that way. I mean, you have to look at it as you're bettering the next generation. You're you okay. Look at something that like, if you don't personally uh, get something out of, you shouldn't do. I mean, that's the whole idea is that I don't disagree with you. Person. I don't disagree with you, except the fact that now that's not what I'm paying for anymore, right? Like, this isn't just about paying to better society because they're learning a bunch of shit that's going to make us smarter and give us a, a, a better chance to, to compete with other countries and so forth. I'm paying so that somebody can go down the longest lazy river in Texas. Like, that's... Well, yes, absolutely right. But you got to understand that it's not going to be... The money that is given is not going to be like, hey, here's this whole money, go fuck off with it. The idea is that there are going to be stipulations. You do have to carry a, a C or above average. You do have to do that. I mean, even even to get my, I got student loans right. to pay for school. I still had to carry at least twelve hours, and I had to carry at least twelve right. hours that I had above C average in, or but else the, I couldn't even get money. Right, so but I mean, you are not the person who's buying the lazy river, right? Like, it's, right. 
you're giving the money to the college that's using the money that I gave you to go to college to buy all this shit to make you want to go to their fucking college. And I have to pay for that because that's part of the tuition that you need in order to meet certain criteria. I mean, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's still going to be in the taxpayer's budget, all this extra shit. The fact that colleges are charging these ridiculous amounts of money because so many people want to go to college. Those inflated rates are going to be in my taxes. Like, I'm saying if we're going to do that, then we should try and pack on instead of making uh, it a not only a issue for the student but it should be an issue for the the colleges too right that that's what i'm saying a, a which it needs to be there should be a, a retention you know that how many because that's what happens is you have a, a freshman class of three thousand, and then you have a sophomore class of 500 right you know that's true too but there can also just be uh look if if like are we not we can't be foolish enough to think that college as an industry is not going to benefit from the government paying for anybody to go to college. Like you think tuition numbers are up now, wait until anybody can go for free. Everybody's going to sign up, right? The tuition enrollment is going to skyrocket. They're going to need more colleges than they have right now to take on the amount of people that want to go to college when they don't have to worry about either paying for it or going into debt. Right? So if that's the case, Louisiana for years, Okay. Louisiana, you can go to college for free in Louisiana? I didn't know that. If you uh, graduate high school, I think you have to graduate high school with an above B average, and then you can go to any state-funded college in Louisiana, and they will pay for it as long as you keep a C average. And you don't have to pay anything uh, back. Right. Awesome. I mean, that's that's only, cool. It only covers tuition. So right. I, mean, I think you still have to cover like room, board, that kind of crap Books like that. and shit like that, yeah. sure. Yeah. I, and that's cool. Again, I'm not look at, and I don't know what Louisiana colleges are like. And, and just because that's where, look, I'm, I'm not saying it wouldn't work. I'm not saying that more people wouldn't go to college and be able you're just to, you're having to pay for the damn lazy, lazy river. Yeah, I, I'm saying, I'm saying like, <laughs> and it's not just the lazy river. It's also 3% higher than fucking uh, th- not 3%, three times higher than inflation every year. Like I, I also have to pay for anybody who's invested in a college to get rich off of me so that people can like, there should be a reasonable amount of money people can make off the government choosing to fucking pay for everybody to go to college. This is my point. Yeah. Like, yeah you know, the, somewhere we need to cap what college tuition can reasonably be and, and allow it to grow, you know, 10% above interest every year. Fine. Like I'm not saying it can't be reasonable. This is not reasonable and I shouldn't have to pay for unreasonable. Like that's ridiculous is what I'm saying. Careful, that's to... a socialist society. <laughs> that's not a socialist society. <laughs> telling somebody how much money they can make. That's a socialist society. That's I'm not telling you how much money you can make. I'm You're saying how much. Colleges. No. I'm not. I'm selling them how much money I will give them out of my pocket. If they want to go out and make money however they want to make it, that's on them. How much they're allowed to get for me without doing a fucking thing is a whole different story. And we've put limits on that from the beginning of fucking time. How much how much welfare do you get? How nice of an apartment you get? I mean, like all that shit has limits on it when it comes from the fucking other people paying for it. Piggy bank. (laughs) <laughs> you want to go out and come up with the fucking next widget that makes a billion dollars go right ahead i ain't got any problem with that but i'm not gonna fucking give you the billion fucking dollars that's on you to go make you know what i'm saying if you want to subsidize the widget that's a whole different story <laughs> <laughs> uh that's all i'm saying i do like the idea of free college i got two kids fuck i really love the idea of free fucking college yeah Yeah, i am gonna benefit from it at some point (laughs) (laughs) but i'm just saying i i don't think i should be paying for that i don't think other people should be paying for my kids to party like that i'm okay with them just paying for my kids to get an education anything beyond that can be between me and them like that's fine just like everything else just like everything else i mean i party when I went to college, but I still yeah. make sure I had the grades. Right. So as long as, I don't give a shit what they do as long as they make the grades. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care what they're doing. 
I just don't want to pay for the beer. Is my point? Like, <laughs> see what I'm saying? Like, I want the beer. You're paying. You're paying for the party space. Exactly. Not much of a difference. <laughs> I don't want to pay for the party space. I don't want to pay for the DJ. I don't want to pay for any of that shit. That's not <laughs> what they are entitled to in order to chase. You don't have to get drunk to chase the American dream. You should. Actually, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure that's on a, on a T-shirt somewhere. <laughs> you should. <laughs> go get a part-time job. Fucking get an allowance. Fucking bum off your roommate. I don't give a fuck. It just ain't coming for me. That's my only point. And, and I mean, fuck, think about all the money that you're not going to be either spending on college or paying back to college. If that ain't fucking party money, I mean, come on. Like, I'm already helping you out. You know what I'm saying? You got extra money laying around now. My sister's neighbors used to... uh donate plasma on Thursday for the party on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to get into that. The certain medications I take. To, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not broke, but that's good goddamn money to that's, sit in a chair and watch a fucking it, video for an hour. And it's gotten better too. Like, yeah, at, at, I, it, when I was going to college, you see something like maybe 50 to $70 a week. Now it's like $200 a week or something you can get. For just sitting that, there in an air conditioned room. Yeah, that's party money right there. I mean, like, it hurts a little bit, not that much, not $200 yeah. much. And, and you produce more. <laughs> yeah. And here's the other benefit. Like, on top of you getting to make money, you're actually helping people making that's money. Right. Like, you get that's to feel right. good about it, too. That's right. <laughs> Anybody and, out there listening who has it. That's you're right. You're headed for the next day, so it's easier <laughs> to get drunk. That's right. Anybody <laughs> who listening who hasn't figured out the plasma racket yet i highly if you're capable of donating i will say at some point we're talking about discrimination issues they need to stop suggesting that if you're gay you shouldn't be able to give plasma that seems pretty fucked up to me i like when i was reading that form i was like you can't be serious like this can't really be a question on this form right like what the fuck that's ridiculous i mean they test this shit like yeah, like I don't want gay blood to save me. Right. What well, I, I, okay. <laughs> wait, wait, so, wait, wait. Is that plasma gay from a gay person, right. or is that before I die? Right. I'm not becoming gay because I needed some fucking plasma transplant in the hospital. <laughs> God damn it. No, I mean, look. To be fair, not that I think it's right. I want to, yo, know, say that very clearly, right? But I think the idea is HIV is more likely to transmit during homosexual sex than non-homosexual sex. I think that's just mathematically proven to be true, okay? But yes, but you're also you're also inferring that um oh gosh, how do I say this? Man and woman sex never have homosexual sex? Well, that's true. That's true. I mean, I get, you know, I guess they could be more specific on the form. Have you ever engaged in homosexual so but i mean i think the idea and is maybe that, we should just call it anal sex because that's what we're right, talking about not right. necessarily homosexual oh i see what you're saying sex. i see what you're saying <laughs> right you're right well and you're right that is true i think you know look it's i think what they're trying to do and i don't think it's right is look at it from an insurance standpoint right like just because you're 16 doesn't mean you're a bad driver it just means statistically you're more likely to be one right and sure, i think if you sure. look at the numbers statistically if you participate in that kind of sex uh, there's anything wrong with it. it you're statistically more likely to have hiv than somebody who doesn't but that still seems like i mean it's not like they they test the plasma it's not like yeah they I mean, test like, the plasma for right. hiv it's, they it's, test the plasma for everything of course they do for everything of course you know they I mean? do because there's plenty of straight people who have hiv i mean it's not like we can just count on the fact that if the person is straight and doesn't do heroin that their blood is clean like i mean that's yeah, ridiculous yeah. there's all kinds of tests that it has to go through and you know that that's it's uh, I don't get it. I mean, it just doesn't yeah, make a lot of sense. I don't, I don't to me. understand it's, that either. That's silly. They should maybe they it. just put like the, this, this is the homosexual uh, uh, pile of plasma. right, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, and how many times are they desperate for blood and plasma? And you're honestly telling me that somebody's like, "There's a one in a million chance I might get AIDS, but I'm gonna die without that shit. I'll die. That's, that's fine. Yeah, that's I mean, right. it's fucking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And so, like, I mean, do you know? I don't know. I don't know. I know the the question is there, but does that mean you can't give blood? Like, that yes. Is, yeah, if you answer yes, it does. Yeah, it's a damn. Yeah, because I was talking to a, a a friend of mine at work when I used to work at the office and uh, was telling him about it because I was all excited. I was like, I'm, I'm about to be making like 
I don't know if it's 200, it's, it's like 175. I mean, it's, it, you know, that's 600 bucks a month. I'm like, I, I feel like I'm getting a second fucking job for sitting in a chair for an hour a week. This is fucking insane. Like, how is everybody not doing this? I, I mean, like, I, it was, I just couldn't believe everybody didn't know about this. <laughs> I was so excited about it. So this is the greatest thing. Like, can my kids donate plasma? Like, how the fuck do I amp this up? You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, I figured, like, to get people to pay me $25 a week for giving them the idea to go net. You know, I'm like, there's gotta be a way to, you know, to, to suss this out and make even more money off of it. Uh, anyways, I was all excited about it. And he was like, yeah, except I'm gay. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? He's like, didn't you see that on the forum? I was like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. If you hit, yeah. If you click yes, you're done. I'm like, oh, that's, that's fucked up. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> that's really fucked up. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, they, I you know, they're actually, well, um, well, I don't know. So also see FDA recommendations. So this isn't, this is their recommendation, not from the actual, uh, uh, uh organizations that take the blood. That they recommend that you can give blood if you're homosexual, but you have to uh, sustain for sexual contact for three months with another man. <laughs> a man who has had sex with another man during the past three months. Yeah. And, so, uh, I know this is going to sound homophobic, <laughs> but how many gay dudes go three months without having sex? <laughs> if I was gay, I wouldn't be going three months without sex. I know that shit. <laughs> 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 if all I had to do was convince another guy to have sex, no fucking oh, that, way. <laughs> that, that new guidance, yeah, no, right? It's like, and, you, and would you like some chicken wings too? I yeah, some chicken wings, and then we can go out. You know, <laughs> yeah. Same. Uh, that that is... was only a new guidance released in 2020, so that's just as of 2020 that that is now the FDA recommendation. I don't know. Or this that... might have been before 2020 when I. When I did it, but even I mean, come on, that's fucking ridiculous, too. Yeah, like, so, yeah, yeah, it's fucking stupid, and uh, <laughs> I can't. I mean, I just, I, I don't know. Look, maybe somebody has some numbers that I don't have that makes it more reasonable than I think it is, but it seems silly to me. I just, I, like, can't be that many. I mean, like, was I mean, what is what is the percentage uh, again? I, uh, hey, but lesbians per- can give blood anytime they want to. Yes, actually, they can, <laughs> um, and uh, yes, it's yeah. Uh, a home, you know, male on male sex, and um, and you're right. They don't ask how you know. It's not a question of what kind of sex you're having as a straight or gay person, right? Um, I don't know a lot about gay sex, but maybe that's not always the kind of sex gay people have. Like, but it literally <laughs> asks, "Are you gay?" Like, you know, yeah, "Are you yeah. gay?" Have you been sexually active? Are the questions? Yeah. Um, so even that seems like maybe you're making assumptions there that might not even be what you think it is. You know what I mean? And of course, the fact that straight people can't be having that kind of sex is also, you know, not true. We know that's not true. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, the only thing I can think of that makes it make any sense at all, again, is if like statistically the percentage of homosexual men with HIV is just dramatically higher than it is for, you know, straight men. Um that's the only thing I could think of. And even then, I mean, it would have to I mean, with all the fucking testing and screening and everything that they do. I mean, to me, it would seem like it would have to be more than like, uh, you know, 5% or, you know what I mean? Like you'd have to be like, convince me that I'm like 4,000 times more likely or something for it to even still make sense. You know what I mean? I can't imagine that's true. Yep. Anyway. No, I hear you. Yeah. So. All kinds of biases. <laughs> see, uh, a lifetime blanket ban on blood donations for any man who has ever had sex with a man was introduced following the rise of HIV and hepatitis B cases in the 1970s and 1980s. But once it was realized that these conditions could be passed on through blood, it was crucial that those who were most at risk of contracting the viruses, including gay and bisexual men, were not able to pass them on through blood donations since effective screening was not yet available. In 2011, the ban was lifted and replaced by a 12-month deferral period in which MSM, which is man, sex, man, need to abstain from sex to be allowed to donate blood. You have to, you have to not have sex for a year. Uh, what, what does that have to do with the screening process? Like, it does it take 12, maybe does it, Maybe it used to take 12 months to know for sure. Is that the theory behind that, maybe? I guess at that point, 
it was 12 it was 12 months so now it's probably been changed to three months because we get test results back faster maybe but isn't i mean it's not like they were gonna test me for aids when like they test the blood or the plasma don't they like why well, I, I still don't get that like yep yep no i hear you too put the put the plasma on the shelf however long you have to to make sure it's clean before you give it to somebody you know what i mean like a, so it says we have a three month deferral because there is a small possibility the tests we carry out are not able to pick up recently acquired infections if someone was to donate blood during this time known as a window period gotcha. it would be possible to transmit an infection they explained gotcha and so then the question becomes are, are gay men statistically like way more likely now what do you mean to have aids or it's, hiv well any any sexually transmitted disease okay i mean it would seem like one that had to have been true for a while until we realized what was going on and then people started using condoms, right? It seemed like that. I mean, I <laughs> yeah. know AIDS hasn't gone away, but it seems like the spread has gone down quite a bit since everybody realized you can wear a condom and then not get it. <laughs> you know I mean? Maybe not. I don't know. These are not um, chats I have on a regular basis, so I'll admit <laughs> to not being completely fluent on, you know, percentages of hiv cases yeah yeah anyways so so mm -hmm. i shouldn't have to pay for people to go to college <laughs> is my point <laughs> i've been trying to make <laughs> i think it's okay to pay for people to go to college i think that's that's perfectly fine right, I, I tell you what i do agree with that i shouldn't be paying for the lazy river and there should right. be some more uh regulations put on the colleges as far as retention and that yeah because they have a ridiculous uh freshman class and then plus how um, much they're allowed to charge i mean if you yeah. you know there's private again like you're saying how much money there's private schools right i mean they could you know i i don't have to pay for somebody to go to private school it has to be a state school state schools need to regulate how much they charge in in um tuition if they're if if they want students who are using you know um government funds to pay for their tuition then there has to be a, you know a reasonable limit on tuition all those things seem very reasonable if you don't like that open your own college and don't take students that use college you know like i guarantee you people are still going to want to go to fucking harvard because there's rich people who want to go to harvard you know what i mean like yep forever yep build an amazing fucking school charge a fuck ton of money for it you're totally entitled to do that if i'm paying for it it's got to be reason and i'm look there needs to be cafeterias and you know there needs to be a gym and a you know fine with all that shit there does you know i mean there you know some reasonable person can determine whether or not the, the world's largest fucking movie theater needs to be part of that or not you know what i mean like that's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> and you want to have the world's largest movie charge admission to pay for that shit okay and then you can have whatever fucking movie theater you want okay? you know, like you want a lazy river build that shit raise the money do your thing i ain't paying for it that's what i'm saying probably will but i don't want to is what i'm saying <laughs> oh that's kind of cool. 21 states have some kind of tuition-free college or statewide scholarship program to help students afford college. Yeah. These programs range from making two-year school tuition free to offering a full ride to some public colleges. Sure. Yeah. There's all yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that you can get that doesn't cost anything. Uh like, you know, tuitions, grant money, and um, and then there's like competitions that you can enter, you know best essay you know best fucking science experiment like they have like those shit where you build the fucking robots and the winners game. i mean there's all fucking kinds of way you can earn money that you don't have to pay back to go to college and then there's all the shit like are you an eskimo or are you an indian are you fucking um you know a, a fucking mexican person that lives in new york i mean like <laughs> who knows? they have all this shit for be you know unusual people because if you're unusual, you deserve to go to college more than everybody else does, of course. And no, I'm just kidding. But um, there's all kinds of grants that you can get based on ethnicity and religion and all kinds of shit. Um, 
And I remember when I was applying for college, like I would go to the library, which you don't have to do anymore. And there was like a thing that you could go and you'd like put in all the information about yourself. And I like came home with like a 10 page list of shit that um, I immediately qualified or I could participate in, or I could try to win yeah. or whatever to try yeah. to subsidize the cost. Absolutely. Um, I mean, uh, I'm, a, I'm part of a professional group and we give out scholarships and basically yeah. you just have to prove that you're taking courses in our degree plan, right. which every single freshman uh, has, you know, I mean, cause it's the, you need the freshman courses anyways to get any kind of scholarship right. or to get any kind of a, a degree plan. My but, dad started a scholarship program for people going into commercial real estate at UTSA. And they give out, we have a competition every year and the winning team gets like $10,000 or something like that. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. There's all kinds of shit out there if you're resourceful, but the truth of the matter is, I mean, you're not going to qualify for all of it, but I mean, I, I think a lot of people just don't even go after a lot of the shit that they can't get. I mean, if everybody did, it'd be much harder to get. Um, I mean, it's not like there's an endless supply out there, but there's a lot of shit that people aren't even trying to don't even realize. Oh, yeah. it. They're, they're not, it's not advertised well. And even some of the stuff that is advertised well, just people just don't get our right. that money. Uh, we put aside, I think we have right now around $24,000 in the bank for this specific uh, uh, scholarship. I think we give out like around $1,000 per semester. And this year we had one applicant, you know? I mean, that was it. Right. And he, he won or he got it, you know? Right. <laughs> he, he applied, he got it. I mean, we do have like, you have to like write a... a, a <laughs> paper or something and you have to you know again but his like, was better than everybody else's exactly so. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's cool yeah um no I, you know look i i really do think like we're putting okay, so I out looked up, i looked up Elmer the louisiana Elmer. deal yeah oh yeah for real uh i looked at the louisiana thing louisiana thing which is actually the the beginning is ridiculous uh it's like this uh um uh, oil tycoon came in to like do a, a what is it called job day or whatever what's it called where you like say hey i'm a policeman and this is what job i do fair? no not the job fair when you actually go career to your class yeah career day so he went he was like an oil man and he told the class if the class whoever in the class keeps a b average through high school i'll pay for you to go to college and everyone in the class did and they right. kept the b average and they he paid for them all to go to school so <laughs> that the they expanded it to the state and the state said again it, uh let's see where were the it's totally uh, originally <laughs> huh that's it look did you watch the office yes i like that did you I remember like the one movie. where he like promised all those kids oh, that they graduated yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and he ended and up then, buying them not computers but backup ba uh, backup uh batteries oh, for their laptops that they didn't God. have because <laughs> that was all he could oh, afford no. <laughs> oh, oh that show oh. every time i start watching it again i have to get used to like how uncomfortable he made you know what i mean like it's always so awkward that it's like hard yeah. to watch for a while and then you get used to it again. But like everything he does just makes you feel so awkward. So when they did it, they kept the B average. So like originally you had to keep a 3.0 GPA to get the to get college paid for, which is awesome. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. And they did lower it to 3.0 is not that hard in high school. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. It's kind of like the, uh, the norm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, because I think I got like an 84, 85, or somewhere 87, I don't know, somewhere around there, mid 80s, somewhere around there, and I, no, I didn't try very hard. I had like a 94, it was much higher until my, like, I think, I think I got early acceptance, like, towards the beginning of the second semester of my junior year, and so I just had to, you know, like, uh, once they accepted me, I just had to, Coast. you know, have... Right. I mean, it just had to like, I had to graduate and I had to have the right amount of credits and that was it yeah, at that yeah. point. <laughs> so, I, I did the exact opposite. Dropped. I had like the worst junior year, like ever, like uh, my junior year probably brought my GPA down to the eighties. 
like before I was, I was doing really, really well. And then like I came yeah. back my, my uh, senior year and I took regular, you know, just regular nothing courses and my GPA came back up. Yeah, no. Well, so mine was good up and until that point. It had to have been 98, 99. I mean, I, I rarely got low scores on anything, but then it was like, well, I just have to pass. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, you know, high school, your, your GPA is just about getting into college. It doesn't do That's you right. any other good than that. Yeah, so I was yeah. like, I've never been on a job interview that asked me what right, I make exactly. in high school. Exactly. What I make in high school. It's like, there's no point in this anymore. I'll just make sure I pass. And then, yeah. and so. Matter of fact, no one actually asked me what kind of grades I took in college. They just wanted to know, did I get the degree? Right. You know, it's true. Unless you're Absolutely. trying to get into like law school or medical school or something like that, it doesn't really yeah. matter anymore. Even, what is it? Uh, what do you call it? A, a doctor who graduated his college with a C average? Right. Doctor. doctor. That's right. <laughs> you know, they found that statistically doctors don't have higher IQs. Um, that, you know, that. No, no, uh, no, no, they don't. They just know how to study. Well, yeah, they're, they're more, dri- they're, you know, A type personalities, but they're Absolutely. not any smarter. They're just willing to work hard. Well, that's one of the things that I came out of college and I had my degree and everything and I went into my field and I was like, you know, and people were always like, you know, I guess trying to put this like label on me that I, that I thought I knew everything because I went to college. I was like, no, I just know how to, I just know how to study. I know how to ask the right questions. That's it. That's the only thing. The only thing I learned in college was how to learn, how to ask the right questions, Right. you know, problem solving. That's it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, college. I mean, uh, I think the hardest part about college is just doing it. <laughs> you know, yeah. the most yeah. of the people who don't it's end up with a, yeah, they just don't show up. They don't, you know, they party or whatever. You know, yeah, they take just, other things more seriously. It's just completing it. That's it. That's yeah. the hardest thing. Yeah, for sure. Showing up. All, All right. right. Do we lose? It looks like he's still there. He must be listening. Intently, yeah, no, I'm still here. I'm definitely (laughs) still here. See, even Dot likes listening to the show, and he's on it. That says something. (laughs) (laughs) I I interact. interact. I'm just fucking with you. (laughs) Very good. I was was just at the park on a swing, and I don't want to see y'all see me fall. Uh, Ah, it's awesome. I've been wanting to. I've been wanting to swing for a long time. Like for real, like I haven't actually yeah, I like swung I, I did the Miley swing. Cyrus uh, chandelier wrecking ball. My bad. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. No, we used to do the. It was the top. You know, you had to swing right next to the person, and you know that was your wingman. You know. Oh. When top Gun came out. You had to like. You, you, you know. You had to, yeah, exactly. That was your wingman. You no, know, mine. Mine, which was funny because it was like the last time I actually swang was probably oh I don't know eight eight years ago or something was that I used to like, you know, you 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 rock it off the swing, you jump off the uh-huh. swing at yeah. its highest point sure. when you just go straight down or you do it right in the middle of the swing and it and it yeah I remember Shoot being so freaking scared of like actually jumping off the swing <laughs> like as an adult when I was <laughs> never <laughs> ever yeah. scared of doing it when I was a child. <laughs> I only are uh, the only I'm pretty sure I did something to my ankle, but I don't think anything broke. It was really bad, but I don't think I broke anything. Oh, I broke a I broke a knuckle in my finger playing basketball. I've had a lot of injuries, but the only pretty sure the only bone I ever broke was jumping off a swing. Nice. Yeah. I, and then it healed and I jumped off a bunch of other ones. <laughs> 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 did not slow me down at all. None of that shit did. I just always see that there's this, this big big girl and it's on one of those whatever the the clips you see and she's on the swing and she tries and she like does a tumble and it like tum- and her wig comes off and everything and <laughs> coming off the sl- coming off the swing and I'm like oh that's just gonna be me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's rough you gonna lose that's my wig rough. yeah no I uh the hardest thing when I fucked up my knuckle like the ball hit like just like that yeah, and yeah. the pressure popped a chip out of my knuckle and it hurt but i mean it wasn't like when it happened it hurt and they taped it up and it was fine and it really didn't hurt after that but um there was like a chip like loose in the joint and it was too th- it was too small for them to screw it into the bone i don't know why they couldn't just fucking take it out but for whatever reason 
I had to, I couldn't play basketball for like four weeks because if the chip moved, it would like attach to the growth plate on my finger. My finger would stop growing. Oh. And uh, that shit was like, I still played occasionally. And then like my coach would come in and yell at me or my mom would yell at me. I was like so hard to stop playing basketball when it didn't even fucking hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is bullshit. I mean, I guess now I'm glad that the finger isn't like, you know, a half inch shorter than it's supposed to be. <laughs> but I, my I fingers... stabbed myself. I stabbed myself in my hand at some point when I was like 20, 21. And they went and did an x-ray of my hand. And it showed that I'd broken like every single finger on my hand at least <laughs> once. They actually called my dad in to ask him about child abuse and stuff like that. <laughs> No, I just, I just always played hard, you know? Yeah. I, I'm surprised. I, I used to punch when I would get really upset. I would just punch shit. I beat up a, like a payphone one time that payphone always wins in that fight. I'll tell Every you right single now. time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, without a bat or something, just your knuckles. It's not, it's not, I don't, I don't know a lot of people that could win that fight. And, and my hands swelled up so much. I couldn't bend my fingers. Um, which yeah, was the elevator. Yeah. And, uh, so good. They went yeah. every time too. I had to go to the emergency room and my girlfriend had to like unbutton my pants for me and shit. Cause I couldn't, I couldn't use my fingers at all. It was only for like, I don't know, it was eight hours or some shit, but I've, I've done shit like that a lot. Not, not that bad. That was the worst I'd ever done it, but I did that shit all the time. And I don't know how I didn't like fuck up a knuckle or break a finger or some shit punching inanimate metal objects when i got pissed off <laughs> i did i broke my windshield by punching it one time that was rather impressive i thought i, I mean I, I was a i wasn't happy that my windshield was broken but i was really pissed off and i was just like hit it thinking i mean come yes. on how hard should you have to hit a windshield to crack it you know what i mean it's like that shouldn't move. happen yeah I've done that too. It's not a good move. And they like that my fucking rear view mirror fell off because of the cracks and shit. I was like, oh fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Felt pretty stupid after that, right? Yeah, I don't think I mean I'm quite certain if you asked me to crack a windshield, I couldn't fucking do that. So I don't know exactly how it happened, but yeah, it was bad luck, I guess. Hit it in the right spot. Maybe there was already like a, a, a yeah. crack. Yeah, so, so, yeah, exactly. It just yeah, we're obviously not that tough. Yeah, I'm saying, I mean, I don't think I am, and I think I'm pretty tough, you know? My favorite scene, all right, real quick. Um, me and a friend of mine uh, went to, to this guy's house that we were, that he didn't like very much, and, and, and we'd go over there and fuck with him, and um, we were in the parking lot right next to his car, and my, <laughs> my, my friend kept trying to break his, like, it was, I think it was a truck, and it had that, like, back window, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like hitting it, and nothing would happen, and, and he hit it, and nothing happened. And then he like picked up, there was a jack in the back of the guy's truck, and he picked it up and threw it and didn't even fucking punch. Oh. I mean, it must, must have been like plexiglass or something. Like, I don't think it was actually glass. But, oh, fuck. It was so funny watching my friend freak out, like trying to get, he was hitting it with the jack, and it was like bouncing off and shit. I'm like, God, what kind of pussy can't break a window with a jack, dude? What is wrong with you? <laughs> that jack like i mean dude, it bounced off it like a fucking trampoline dude like it was a <laughs> oh that's some funny shit <laughs> it never broke <laughs> it never broke <laughs> no he was not very happy about that <laughs> all right it's about that time ladies and gents we are signing off we will see y'all next week. Have a good one. Adios. Adios. And uh, we will make sure that uh, Sir Snuggles makes an appearance each week. If you, uh, uh, so, I'm, so I'm it, coming by to see Sir, Sir Snuggles because he's he's very cute. Not you. I understand that. I'm not <laughs> Sir Snuggles. I completely understand. <laughs> so I need to come by and see that guy. <laughs> I mean, you know, look. I think, you know, come and watch us. But if for no other reason, come and check out the extremely cute puppy dog. <laughs> we'll take we'll take them however we can get them, you know? <laughs>
one I of think, the topics is Mr. Snuggles. That's right. We're gonna for what it, anybody who was really interested. I think shortly there's gonna be a Mr. Snuggle. Uh, I'm sorry, Sir Snuggles Facebook page that you guys can go and check out where he where's where where he's um, you know Officer Snuggles and um, I got my hair a, moving a little. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll have the earphones on. It'll be DJ Snuggles and the whole nine. So check it out. It should be cute. Word. All right. We'll see you guys next week. All right. All right. Love All right. you, brother. Y'all have a safe week. You too, man. Y'all too. Yes, sir. Peace. Bye.